Welcome to the second test grip for the Penance Halloween 2023. And joining, of course, is the remnants of the Rat Run group. So who are you? Where would folk know you from? And who are you playing tonight? Starting with Bellary. Well, that's me. Hey, how are you doing? Um, I'm Bellary, as was, as was previously mentioned. Um, I guess I'd be known from here, because I don't do much else. <laughs> I am playing William Scrope. Federal Health Inspector Halfling. Um, I suppose we will learn more about him as we go on. Uh, I don't want to give away too many, too many hints and secrets. You know, got to keep things mysterious. Um, but yeah, um, happy to be back to doing this again um, after I've just had the the kid, <laughs> which you might know if you've uh, looked at the. Uh, I can't leave. We can't leave that in, mean, can we? <laughs> yes, we can. Please, <laughs> we can and we will. It will be about a month till this goes live, so. Oh, uh, wait, well, then the joke will be long gone by then. Yeah, but still <laughs> going. Keep it going, though. I do not intend to keep this going for a month. <laughs> you might not. Jeff. <laughs> I will 100% keep it going. Yo, Jeff, go. It's your turn. Oh, yeah, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, I am Jeff. I am probably known from the Discord or my art on Instagram and such. Uh, I will be playing Jingo Star. I'm a musician who has fallen out with the band The Battles. And I am searching for that new sound. The Battles. The Battles. Okay. To make sure I heard that right. Okay. Uh, what's your art under? Uh, it is jeffzilla.art, and that's pretty much like, well, X now, because it's not Twitter anymore, and then like, Instagram. And finally we have Klepto. Hello! I am Klepto. You will know me from various places. I sometimes pop up doing voices on Ian streams, which is Ian streams on Twitch. Mm. I mean... I should probably know that, <laughs> but, and, um, yeah, I am playing Fonts, a party halfling, with a red mullet. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, that's the players, let's begin. So as with every, uh, every and any Halloween episode we've ever done with Bennett's, you have responded to work on the wall of the tavern. As you arrive in the tavern, um, you are sort of getting, you're sort of standing around, looking kind of awkwardly around, and you notice uh, a steward come out of a back room, coughs quite loudly, and then His Lordship, the Honourable Fabius Vincenzo Cassiano Mateus Forty the Third, Admiral of the Order, Protector of the Realm, Personal Huntsman to the King's Kitchen, Highest Bishop of the Divine Lady, Recognised Seventh in Line for the Throne of Duskinov, Master of Wit, Wisdom, and Wholesome Living. Father of Fabius Vincenzo Cassiano Mateus Conforti IV, the soon to be uncontested king of all Duskanov, bids you enter his illustrious chamber. Please remove your shoes. You've done this on purpose, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Kick off my flip um, flops and saunter into the room. Well, to be fair, I'm only wearing loafers, so slide them suckers off. <laughs> Is the like a little shoe area? Uh, there's, there's a small pile of shoes just outside the door, yes. But is it not like a shoe like rack or like a no. shoe cubby? And then I cannot, uh, in, in good conscience or good practice, just throw my shoes on that pile. That would be terribly unsanitary and also uncouth. Just tie the laces together and put them around your neck, you drunko. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't think any of us were ready for that accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, they will yeah. remain squarely on my feet, thank you. Uh, that is where they belong. Oh, I see. We've got a Martin Jet. voice, okay. Yes, we have a bit of a Martin. Except this, this is William's illustrious... spoke. This illustrious gentleman has invited us in out of the goodness of his heart. All he asks is to take your shoes off. Yeah, he might have some weird foot thing, but you know, that might be some extra money for us. So get oh. your fucking shoes off and tie them round your neck. I will gladly accept this, uh, this gentleman's wonderful offer, but uh, given the 
the conditions that he is leaving them in, I cannot in good conscience leave them there. Put them around your neck! N that, that would be uncouth. No, I couldn't. No, that is disgusting, you vile creature. No, it just doesn't know how to party! No, I do not party. I do not party. I party. party. And I'm gonna make my best attempt to look down my nose. Despite being <laughs> quite short. Look down the nose, Jack. We're called halflings. Would that be ethical? <laughs> what are we gonna call it on the nose? Alright, so, you, you make your way forward into the room. As soon as you walk through the room, there's a very empowering smell of chi. And as you look towards the table, there is a gigantic table uh, covered in hundreds of about 18 different plates of food. And uh, there's only one chair at the table, and it's this massive, almost blob of a man sitting behind in this massive chair, filling his face full of food. Um, the closer you walk to the table, the stronger the finest parmesan smell gets. And as you look around, seeing the lack of a cheese dish, you kind of wonder to yourself where the scent is coming from. Ooh. The bees! I, uh, I would the like bees. to make some... Just some notes on the, the general layout of these tables, like, uh, if... Like, uh, if there's any seafood, if it's chilled, um, if everything's... Like, if there's separate knives and forks for meat and non-meat products, etc, etc. As you, you get closer, you, you just hear the sort of... <laughs> Sound of eating, and uh, as you get close to it, he sort of lifts his head from his eating this like massive suckling pig he seems to be chewing on, and goes, "So you're gonna work for me then?" Good. Uh, I am actually here on her, his magic. Wait, well, our government, I suppose, is orders to uh, <laughs> perform a health inspection of the place, sir. Um, I would say that you're not doing very well currently. Uh, those oysters are clearly not kept at uh, an appropriate level of chilledness. They are probably quite rancid. Mm. Um, not to mention the general cleanliness is mm. far below standard. He looks up at you, uh, takes a large guzzle of wine, and then la sort of snorts out a laugh. Get <laughs> one! At this point, the, um, the sort of servant from before stands next to him and goes, does my lord wish to explain himself? And the man again picks up this gigantic chicken and starts taking a bite out of it. Suddenly he starts like coughing really loudly. The steward pulls out a small bell and starts ringing it and three rather burly men run out from the back room in between them to perform this gigantic Heimlich manoeuvre on the, the man and as this entire chicken leg flies forth from its mouth and lands at your feet. Okay, with the bell ringing in the room, can I check the acoustics? <laughs> the acoustics are relatively nice, all things considered. You always gotta be aware of that new sound. <laughs> he again wipes his face uh, as this massive, like, thick clump of drool comes out. <coughs> he goes, Yeah, Jessup! Pay them what they want! Double it and bring it back! Get out! And he goes back to eating this the, the pig that was in front of him. And the servant nods and walks round to the front and goes, His lordship would like you to retrieve his wife and child who have left to uh, go to this strange island of... Um, what is the name? One second. Island of Ferua. Ferueth. Oh, yeah. Yes, Ferueth. It's a small um, backwater island of some kind, but... He's got this small religious pilgrimage upon, and um, the dear lady Catherine has decided to to take her leave and go there with, her, with his lordship's child, and uh, his lordship disagrees. Veruith, you say. Well, it just so happens that uh, my next job happened to be over there, so I may travel with you if you can keep your partying and your various fluids out of the way. Um, oh. Oh, his lordship will be travelling. His lordship doesn't deal well with boats. Yes, it's it's probably for the best, I suppose. I imagine he wouldn't need one anyway. He looks like he would float quite well. Um, oh, his lordship gonna... abides water of all kinds. Yes, all kinds, I'm sure. Um, just one moment. And, uh, I pull out my clipboard and I just 
I just scribble a big like F on it. <laughs> Slap it down on the table. And you will be hearing from my supervisors. And they will be here. They will most likely shut you down, I'll be honest. Uh, the kitchen at the very least is clearly not. Not working to the requisite standards we expect in this, uh, in his lordship's uh, oh, country. Well, that's no concern of mine. His lordship is merely renting this room. Well, yes, but I, I expect they will shut the kitchen down, and by the looks of your lordship, you will be somewhat displeased at that, unless you get your all of your ducks in order, as it were. Oh, the duck course is coming later. Yes, I expect it is. Um, we will expect further action from you. Yes, but, uh, quite. Well, we will be back in a few weeks, and we expect the we expect the actions listed therein to have been done. Well, quite well. If you can bring the Lady Catherine back, and of course the young Fabius, that would be marvelous. We will pay you all equally and as much as you wish. Mm. A healthy living and a healthy workplace is a reward in and of itself, I think you'll find. Quite. He just looks over and the, the large blob of a man seems to have fallen asleep mid-bite. This man is likely to catch dysentery at this rate. No, I don't think you can catch anything, to be bloody honest, sir. Very droll, very droll. There's nothing to be trifled with, though, those bacteria there very quick. They have a way of multiplying. You can't see them, but... Indeed. Um, well, do you need any more information? The boat leaves first thing tomorrow. Well, I, like I said, I'm, I'm going there anyway, so I might as well travel. So, uh, Perhaps cult my companions they... might recall some more information. Yeah. This cult, is it one of them sexy cults? One of them stabby cults? One of them sacrificey cults? What kind of cult are we talking about here? Oh, it's some true. kind of new age, the world's <laughs> end is coming cult. They, they ran by some weirdo with a beard. Uh, I can't trust anyone with a beard. They're all weirdos. Mustache oh. though. Tight. Also, are they one of these, you know, oh, no alcohol kind of people? No, no, no. They, they apparently believe in free living as long as you accept forgiveness, but they're all a bunch of hippies if you ask me. Well, alcohol no, has its place right, makes a fantastic disinfectant. Well, I do like a hippie, and do we know if this cult has a sound yet? <gasps> well, like, hymns and stuff. Well, you know, I'm just looking for that new sound, so I just, maybe they have a sound, maybe they need a sound. Maybe they can give you the inspiration you're looking for, brother. Maybe they could. Have you considered the sound of one hand clapping? Well, if you need anything else, please, uh, please let me know as soon as possible. I will tell his lordship that you are leaving tomorrow. Uh, he, he walks back know. round and, and he sort of takes out a small stick and just starts poking the, the man. Eventually, you hear, ah, 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 ah. They are willing to take your orders, sir. They are going to uh, leave in the morning. Good! I found the brothel! Uh, oh, sir, be... you've had two already today. I need more! And one doesn't cry this time! Uh, very well, sir. And he goes back to eating his pig. Just shudder at the, uh, the thought of all the germs. <laughs> I will not be staying here tonight, I assure you that. Not in these, frankly, squalid conditions. Oh yeah, where are you staying then? Oh, anywhere would be better than this, I suppose. Find a tavern somewhere that owns a cleaning rag, I'm sure. Vile the place. Okay. Well, as you are you walking back out the door then? Are you going to find your evenings evenings in the tim? Yeah, yeah. No, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This is grim as far as <laughs> Williams. Well, you amuse yourself for the evening, and the next morning you uh, arrive at the docks. You, you arrive at the docks, you see a, um, a quite ragged looking man handing out little pamphlets of paper. Uh, hello, hello. Are you, uh, are you interested in finding fulfillment, my dear friend? I'm always looking for familiar. For, for, for 
Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Help me. You can do it, I believe in you. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Well, if you get on your boat here, go to the Isle of Bruce, you'll be able to find it. Is there a sound on the boat? Does the boat have a sound? Well, what a sound, Silas sir, there but the sound of the Lord above. Can you Keep hear his voice, glory. sir? Nobody's ever said any words to me, but, you know, maybe I'll find you something. I mean, I you can find yeah. his, his, his voice, sir. I'm sure you can hear it better on the Isle of Relief. Well, you... something is telling me that I need to get on this boat. <laughs> so, I will get Oh, on wonderful, boat. wonderful. Well, make sure we're in, sir. Wish you a good trip. Did we not already have a boat chartered to go to that very isle? Yes, this is the boat we're supposed to get on, or is it another boat? How many boats are going to this island? Oh, just this one, just this one. Oh, well then, this is our boat! I suppose you look it like it was itself, faded! It's, it's quite a large boat, but it seems to be already relatively busy with what looks like um, people of various different, you know, uh, classes and uh, funds and stuff. They all seem to be quite excited and all talking about the, uh, you hear the name Artemis come up, coming up a lot. So, I've given myself law, right? Mm -hmm. But I've written in backwards health reg regulations. <laughs> so, does that mean I just have law on health regulations or can yes. I do a law check on Artemis? You have law on, on health regulations. Okay, just making sure. I mean, you can never heard of this uh, Artemis degree, character. But... Yes. Never heard of this Artemis character. Not a clue. Oh, he's a wonderful man, sir. A wonderful man. I mean, sorry, I'm eating a biscuit. Can I, can I roll like a religion check? Yep. <laughs> First roll of the game, baby. Here's the button. What are we putting into roll? Is it like slash d20? It's dot d20. Plus two. Seven. No, it's a seven. <laughs> no, you, you, you've maybe heard the name, but no, nothing's coming forward about it to your mind. I like the sparkles of this, uh, this chatbot, this dice bot has. That's all I wanted to say. Sorry, people who are listening to this, you can't see them, but it's got lovely sparkles next to the walls. <laughs> and the occasional balloon, apparently, for some reason. There's a balloon. I don't know what the balloon signifies. Yeah, that's all, that's all I wanted to say on that. <laughs> Right, uh, can I find like an empty-ish part of the boat and like set up a drum set and just, you know, just some boat music? Yep. You... I know, I remembered. Join the Discord if you want to see the sparkles. There you go. <laughs> There's the plug. Mm -hmm. You're listening, right. AJ? This is how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that in there. <laughs> Right, okay. So do, you do, I, do, you, do you want me to roll for music? No, I've got no, a plus you, four. You get on the boat, you find a, a small back corner and you, you set up next to some barrels where you can play the drums. We all row on a big brown boat. Just, it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't. Oh, it's vibing to it, but you know, what do yes, I, I know? I'm not convinced <laughs> that's the sound you're looking for. Perhaps something a bit way, more. Like a... Perhaps something a bit more organised, with a bit of a, a structure to it, you know. Music's not about organisation, man. It's about feeling. You've got to be oh. free. Feel the spirit of the music. Move, your brother. Life is about organisation. I think you'll find there is no Life sense is in wandering around. Moving. There is so no about... sense and wandering around blindly and taking one. So it's about organised movement. <laughs> yes. I can see you're a peaceful man, brother. <laughs> Alright, well, so you settle into the boat, and uh, over the next couple of days, as your travel goes on, uh, I'm sure that um, that Barry's character has fun telling everyone all the health and safetyness of all the of feeding people. They're fun. I feel like a great deal of frustration. <laughs> so as you and, uh, as you've been on the boat for halfway through the third day of travel, um, you hear the sound of a call from the crow's nest that the land is ahead. And as you and as you pull into this, you see this large island ahead of you. 
um, which is a, a massive lighthouse on top of but maybe two miles square island and there are hundreds of rocks around the edges of the island um, you see many wrecked ships um, dashed among the rocks as you maneuver your way around them and enter the safe the safe port of Brewer. Okay, because, 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 because we've been on this boat for three days, how many of these people on this boat are now fans of my music? Uh, let's let's do a roll. Roll music. <laughs> <laughs> I will roll music. That's no, gotta be first music. and then I'll see how big a dice I need to roll. Fawns is definitely a fan of your music though. <laughs> It's me good. Come on. Nine. Nine. Okay. You have twenty-one fans. Nice. <laughs> After we leave this boat, I will be accepting no more fan mail. <laughs> <laughs> if any fan mail is delivered, it will be tossed. Oh. <laughs> I just stick a little note back in my pocket. Smart. You can't trust what people send you these days. <laughs> Well, you don't know where those tongues have been. <laughs> you join the many, many people making their way off the boat. And you join this massive queue of people who are going past this sort of welcoming desk. And uh, as you're queuing there for a good couple of hours, eventually you reach the front and you see a pair of, um, sort of, uh, you see an elf and a human sitting next to each other and you go, one goes, hello there. I'm I'm Norman. And this is Nigel. Hi Norman. Uh, we're we're right, meeting you today at the island of Vermouth. Uh, Vermouth. Uh, we just like to say, do you have anything you would like to part with? And this sort of gesture to a, a large sort of chest and barrel next to the counter, which is full of the odd like. Um, why have you put a big Q in, Barry? <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> um. You, you, uh, you, you see this like box and uh, and barrel, which seems to be full of random items, be it like you know everyday items or weapons or such like. He goes, "Would you like to make a donation?" Absolutely not. Oh, that's a shame. Yes, well, uh, I suppose we'll both just have to live with that, won't we? <laughs> I'm just oh. going to wander off. <laughs> well, I, I bid you welcome to our lovely <laughs> island. And I hope you yeah. have a good stay. Well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? <laughs> and he gestures off to the side, where you see, um, you just see the island sort of uh, open up, and you can see several things, and we get to our first time slot. Before we do, I'm going to put one dice in the collection of things. Just one. Like, <laughs> there we go. You, you place a dice in the collection of things, and he goes, oh, thank you very much. Well, you never know, someone might want to have a game or something, yeah. and you know, you can always do it with a spare dice. I want to be hoarding it. Weigh me down a bit. Well, bless it be, be. thank you. you no worries. Is this collection, is it like split up into things, or is it just like a barrel full of it's stuff? It's like a barrel full of stuff. And you see that they are basically loading um, whatever has been, uh, of, of all these... Uh, desks and from welcoming people, they seem to collect these barrels and they seem to be loading them onto different ships. At a quick glance, is there anything decent in the barrels worth taking? <laughs> Musically taking? Musically, sure, there's a djembe. Vulcan, like a true Liverpudlian. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I just can I, can I take the djembe and walk? Sure. Wait. I don't know what gem there is. Oh, I'll go and get my gem there oh. in two minutes. Oh, it's a little hand drum. <laughs> yeah, where's my gem there oh. in two minutes? I'll be back. That was a gem there when the story involved. <laughs> nah, neither do I. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't need to know that. No, no. I don't need to know how to spell gem I feel like uh, DJ, DJ EMBE. Just need to know how to play. Not very yeah, well because there's so... been a Gundam crossbones sitting on it and I think it's kind of stretched the skin a little bit. <laughs> oh. No! Not the gem, oh, Ben. It was so tappable. Now I can't play a song oh, for it anymore. Oh no, 
I figured it out. I was hitting the wrong bit. Can't hear it anywhere. Oh, that's okay then. <laughs> <laughs> I was pointing the sound hole at the mic and everything. For all you listeners out there, it was awesome. For all your listeners out there, Benru, Benru was pointing the sound hole at you all. It's still not working. It's still not getting anything through. Oh well, it's a shame. Yeah, because like hole in the bottom, I assume that's where the sound comes out. All this time, Jingbo Star was looking for that new sound, but Willie Scrub found it. <laughs> Yanked your sneeze. So as, as it's getting into early evening, you look around and you see there's the massive lighthouse. And um, in front of the massive lighthouse, there seems to be a, a small group of people talking. You see that the docks is still very busy. There seems to be a lot of thing, a lot of people um, talking and deal, and the small vendors seem to be making deals and stuff. And then you see over on the far end, there's the town square where there seems to be a large inn and several other buildings. What would you like to do? Uh, I would like to go to the inn and make sure it is suitable for habitation. I would like to go to the inn and see what's for drinking. I would like to go to the inn and look for sound. <laughs> Just look for sound. You're in a snow scope, my friend. <laughs> Just looking for that new sound. All right. Well, you journey towards the town square. As you get to the town square, it's relatively busy. Um, there are quite a lot of stalls here. There is like there's a blacksmith, there's a baker, there's a oh, there was a candlestick there. maker. <laughs> no, there's no candlestick maker this year. The baker, the blacksmith, oh. the candlestick maker. <laughs> it's like it's like a proper town though. It's not like a weird hippie commune. Like there's like actual buildings and shit. Yeah, there's like, actual buildings. Okay. Um, there's a innkeeper, a blacksmith, a baker, a fishmonger, a general trader, and a stables. Um, and outside the inn is this massive queue of people stretching is sort of round the building as far as you can see. And as you get to the town square itself, um, someone in sort of, I, I see a tabaxi in sort of uh, relative fancy clothes come in and go, go. Hello, right, hi, hi, uh, yes, uh, hi, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, we will get you in as soon as we can, yes, yes. And they walk up to the first stall next to it and you see them arguing quite loudly with the stall owner. What do you want to do? Uh, Come on, guys! No need cool. to be arguing! I'm sure this can all be hashed out real nice like. How about a pint? You, as you walk up to the innkeeper that's having the argument, um, you hear, Yes, I know, I know, but there is no room. So how about me and yourself come to a very suitable agreement whereby you rent out your house and we do it split it 50-50 and you can take all of these people into your house and you earn a lot of money, yes, because you earn a lot of, lot of people, yes, 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 yes. Come on, you can do this, yes, sure, yes, yes. And Excuse uh, me, you're not packing people in there too tightly above regulation allotment, are you? There should only be one person per bed, you know, unless it's an extra large bed, in which case you can sometimes squeeze uh, a married couple in by, obviously, by proclamation of our Lord. But oh, no, any no, more than no, that no, is really? strictly, strictly uh, the, against the regulations. Right. So Baxi turns back round to you and goes, Well, uh, that is normally the case, yes, but there are so <laughs> many people here. We need to get as many people as we can into each room. There are currently about five to ten people per room. I think you will find that the regulations do not uh, change depending on the amount of people. They are the regulations and they are to be abided by. Well, we are doing the best we can, Mr. Uh, fancy uh, Clipboard Man. Uh, William Scrope, he is my card. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass him a card and try not to touch him while I do so. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Tabaxi takes the card off you and goes, sort of reads it, reads it and then flips it over and reads it again and then sort of looks at you and just sort of shrugs and goes <laughs> Are you the... Who? One? Just sort of, she just sort of shrugs in your general ah. direction I take it you're the owner of that uh, esteemed establishment yes. over there, yes? I am a Petunia, otherwise known as Petal Well then, uh, I should also give you this, it is the, uh, the the order by which I have been sent here to inspect your property or business and make sure it does in fact adhere to the regulations listed therein. I'm gonna hand him like a, a document of like I don't know like eight pages long. 
you, she, so the, she takes the letter from you. She sort of looks at it and goes, Ah, I see this is written in a uh, majestically well-written script. Uh, that usually means that it has come from some kind of money, yes? Well, it comes from our Lord's government, yes. It comes from the officers there listed at the top. So if I don't respond, I get really fancy business people coming, yes? If you don't respond, you will be giving a hefty fee and then perhaps even shut down. Wonderful. Just of course. Up and, tears up and lets it scatter to the floor. I see. Well, I, uh, I shall be right. I, I will still be doing my job and inspecting the premises, but uh, I'll have you know that in... in that's what I'm looking for. Shit. Um, interfering with an official's duty is a finable offence. Yes, well, keeping letting people be out in the rain is also a problem. So, and not I, as far also as before I'm... you come and ask me, I have no room at all for you. I am not interested in rooms, madame. I am just here to do my job. I see. Well, let us agree to disagree. Good evening. It just turns back to the conversation she's having and continues arguing with the, the tradesman. She's an unpleasant, unpleasant woman. Um, and I'm just going to barge I'm really? I'm just going to barge Everyone knows. Window. Everyone knows that beds are better with more people in them. So, you just made to lie down. Get yourself that, some cuddles. You'll feel a lot better for it. That is how venereal diseases spread, I will have you know, and uh, I have no interest in such a thing. Uh, uh, it only spreads if you, you know, do it on your back. If you do it standing up, you'll be fine. That is a uh, often quoted misinformation there. Uh, any bodily fluids, in fact, many bodily fluids, not any if we're going to be strictly accurate, but many bodily fluids can contain those bacteria and pass on the diseases without need of input. Mom, had, Mom had Beza had the bad dose of the clap once, and he did it standing on his head, and that cleared it right up. It could also be, you know, that extinct look, but, you know, no more thing, no more clap. I, I suspect no. it was the latter. While all this is happening, can I just be playing the drums to the crowds of people? Yep. <laughs> we all queue outside in the rain. <laughs> as, you, as you're playing your drum, um, a rather older looking gentleman walks up to you and goes, Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Are you, are you one of those new age musicians? Oh, yes. I'm just travelling around looking for the sound. Sound? Please, tell me more. Well, I was in a band, and then we split up due to um, unfortunate circumstances, and now I'm just looking to see if I can find a new sound. I do like the way your accent says such words, but uh, I've been writing books for children. Uh, would, you, would you be interested in reading them for me? Ooh, I do like a good book. It's just secretly the audiobook special. We getting sponsored by Audible. <laughs> <laughs> is this where I get my time? Is this where I get my deal to, to read Thomas the Tank Engine? Uh, well, I, I, my name is Rev. My name is, my name is Reverend Lysander. <laughs> oh, very nice to meet you. Sir. Well, I don't have a, a tank engine. I don't, I don't really know what one of them is, but it's about a horse and cart that's actually. Well, the horse is uh, going on adventures, and he talks about all his horse friends and drinking, taking carts with him everywhere, up and down the small islands. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do your books communicate to children the importance of regular washing? I well, feel that is the kind of thing we should be impressing upon today's youth. I don't think horses can wash themselves, but they have little people with them, you know, like the drivers and such. And they can help them and clean them down and, you know, give them food and such. Well, nor can they talk, but I, you, you managed to work that in. Well, I mean, it, it, it's from the horse's perspective, so it's all kind of like that kind of mental telepathy of it, like animals can interact with each other. This sounds like an excellent deal. In one of the books, is there a very bad horse that gets blocked off behind a wall. Oh, I mean, that would be quite a, quite harsh, but um, I suppose if there was a, a good reason behind it. Well, I'm sure we could discuss it further. 
I mean, what kind of reason would you have for such a horse being locked behind a wall? Well, maybe he's just going too fast and scaring all the people. Perhaps the horse has leprosy and we need to keep it away from the other horses so they don't get infected. Aye, 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 now! Willie, you know the rules, but don't call it that anymore. It's Hanson's disease. What is actually a thing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, Named I after the band cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and it all comes full. I, I've studied biology for four years and I didn't know that. <laughs> Part of it was, in fact, biomed and pathology. <laughs> Sorry, yes, how, uh, how improper of me, yes, Hanson's disease. <sighs> Named after the famous band, of course, Henson. Named, named after Henson, you know, the famous puppet master. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it Hanson or Henson's disease? I'm Bill really confused. patches all of your skin. Maybe the horse had the clap and it had to be kept away from the rest of them then. Oh yeah, well, I've God on. I've just been... Would Please. horses, if they could talk, horses wouldn't probably call it the clap because they can't clap. They'd call it like the trots or something. I mean, the trots is usually something completely different. Yeah, to we've be got fair. sidetracked again, haven't we? We have. It's my brother would refer to it. He'd refer to the trots as the screaming hab dance. Don't know what that means, but it sounds funny. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> all right. So as uh, as oh. um, Jingle is talking away at this, and Thank the um, Tabaxi is having his loud discussion with oh. everything else, what are you else going to do? Oh no. Hello? Hello. Alright. I want to try and barge my way into the inn while flashing a card okay. uh, in a royal proclamation to get in and do my job. Okay. You push your way into the inn, the inn is full of people. Like, there's barely a, a place to move inside. God, I don't deal with fire regulations, but this is a flagrant disregard of those. Can't even see the damn floor or the tables to see if they're clean. Absolutely fire. Um, and I want to try and start kicking people out in case this is uh, a fire or a pandemic breaks out. Are you just telling people to leave? Yes, uh, we are clearly above capacity, people. Um, this is this is not good. This is not how we do things in civilized society. Um, I'm sure there's a tent or a marquee or perhaps a large leaf you can take shelter under. But it is not safe to be doing it in here, and as such, I will ask most of you, in fact, to leave by order of his lordship. At this point, a very buxom old woman goes, I've paid a lot of money to get inside this inn, and I'm not leaving. Yes, well, you can take your complaints up with the te trading standard agency, and you can contact your local ombudsman. Um, Unfortunately, that is not something I myself would deal with, but it would, it, that would be where you would have to file your complaint. She just sort of eyes you up and down and go, But you're a child! I am no child. I am 42 years of age. I will have you know I am just a halfling. I'm not being told to leave my inn by a halfling. This is not, in fact, your inn. I have already met the proprietor. Yeah, but I've paid to be here. Yes, and unfortunately, you've been swindled, my dear uh, lady. Yes. Swindled? Um, swindled, yes. Swindled? She should not have, the, uh, the proprietor, she should not have taken this many people. It is, in fact, against the law. Like I said, you can direct any issues you have about that with the local ombudsman, and they will probably get in contact with their local trading center's uh, branch. What's an ombudsman? An ombudsman, it's, it's, it's the people who deal with that sort of thing. I don't actually know oh, what they, that what sort do. of thing. Oh, right. I don't okay. actually know what an ombudsman does. I just know that here you go when you have a complaint about business. So, uh, you know, if you if you see someone out, you know, night in a haystack, as it were, that's who you complain to? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you could, yes. I, uh, I don't know if they'd be of any help in that particular instance, but you could try it. I mean, this sounds quite a dangerous person to know, this Rhombusman. Well, I don't know about anyone called Rhombusman, but uh, the Ombudsman is uh, hes not a dangerous individual, he's in fact a government official. Oh, I see. He's a government official, is he? Does he sneak yes. around pretending he's not? Um, no, I believe he wears like a robe and has a special chain. Oh, sounds fancy. 
well, they, it's, it's the the mark of office, I suppose. Well, how about you go and get him and he comes and takes us out? Well, I don't actually uh, know the local ombudsman. I'm not from round here. I'm here uh, as an away party, as it were, because you do not have a local health and uh, standard regulation in this area. I am a... Uh, you will have to take that up with your local government official, I'm afraid. Do, do you mean the elected one? Yes. Well, well, I'm not around. I'm not from around here, so I don't know who that is. Well, I'm sure one of the people here who do in fact live here could help you with that. Does anyone know who the locust rhombusman is? A sort of questioning of people all turning around and starting asking questions. And after a couple of minutes, there's a load of discussions everywhere about rhombusman. Can I roll a bluff and be like, well, why don't you all go and try and find the rhombusman so that you can get your money back? Okay. Roll. Uh, just d20, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Well, add your bluff so it's your address. Where Come on. Come on. Come on. Dot d20, Barry. What? Well, they said d20. Yeah, dot d20. Oh, dot d20. I didn't hear that bit because I wasn't listening. <laughs> you lied to me. Ah, oh, rubbed up. <laughs> Look, man. If I was a smart man, I wouldn't work as a barman. Fourteen. I'd be an ombudsman. A bunch yeah, of people man. start leaving grumpily and wandering around asking for to find, to find the rhombusman. At this point, the, the backs the owner runs back and goes, "What is going on? What what is going on?" And, and they have gone to find. After speaking to the annoyed woman that you spoke to earlier, looks around and makes eye contact with you and goes, You! And walks over and goes, What is this you have told people about this, this, this rhombusman? I was telling them about the ombudsman and how they should uh, seek him in order to get their money back from the, the rooms you charged them for, yet can clearly not offer. You have clearly been a bridge of, uh, breach of standards and uh, but best this practice island is in not a, di it's your not a uh, diplomacy, it is a principality. Well, they shouldn't be here and they are gone. Therefore, I would call that a good result. But we don't have any ombudsman. Well, then it shall keep them busy for a while, I am sure. All right, and while they're gone, I could sell more people space in the inn. No, what? you will cease good selling any rooms. off. You will stop selling. <laughs> While it's quiet, I'm going to see if things are clean. <laughs> uh, everything seems like it's had loads of people just stamping all over it. The, the most mm. places covered in mud. Mud and general people filth. Yeah. Um, can I go outside, like, try and bolt the door closed, and write uh, a like, write little notice that says condemned? Of the inn? Yes. Okay. Roll, uh, actually you don't need to roll, you walk outside, you pull the doors closed, you put a quite a large bolt over the door and begin to write condemned in the door. Immediately there's the sound of banging from inside. Yes, the rats in there are getting rather large, I suppose. Oh, I'm still in there! <laughs> so yes, uh, I imagine um, Jingo and... I forgot what Clip's character was called. Fonz. Fonz, yeah. I imagine Jingo and Fonz are imagined still inside the inn as you've done this. Oh, wait, within the inn? Yeah. Right, can I just can I just start playing music and try and get more fans? I'm gonna amass fans. All right. I'm never rolling knew music. And... Rolling music again. I'm hyping you up, dancing like an inflatable arms man. <laughs> inflatable tube man. Yep. <laughs> oh, there we go. Come on. Natty twenty. Yep. You uh, um you start playing music and people start joining in. There's now the sounds of, sta of stamping and clapping coming from inside. <laughs> How many fans do I get? Uh, let's I'm, see, you get plus I'm, 10 I'm... for that. So you have 41 fans now. Is that including the 21 from yeah. before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start my own cult. <laughs> I have 52 actually now because you had the vicar as well. Ooh, you just end <laughs> I'm just going to take over this island and start my own cult. We just end the episode here with a lock-in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's the, uh, Willy bloke? Oh, I, I don't know. I think he left. I'm on the boat back to the mainland. 
No, I can't. I can't. Sure. No. I, I tried the door I... to go and look for him. I discover we're locked in. You discover you're locked in. The sound of um, banging and clapping and singing is getting louder and louder from within. Bunch <laughs> of people outside are getting more and more angsty that this is all happening within the inn. <laughs> Everybody wants to be in there. Is, uh, Barry, is your character standing outside the front making sure people can't enter? <laughs> the bouncer! The <laughs> not the point, I would have tried to find the town guard to clear everyone else out. Right, you I feel around. like I'm a very official person. <laughs> like, I do things officially. You don't find a town guard lying around. The closest you can find is there's a blacksmith in the, um, in the town square that looks relatively strong compared to everyone else. But he's not employed by the local government to do no. beer guard. No, then I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask him for help. Uh. I mean, to be fair, you literally could have stood at the door and like let people like in as people left. You could have no. been the bouncer. We're not have condemned the building. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take everyone out. He shut the door, put out. a bar across it, and kept can real condemned on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to turf everyone else out myself then, I guess. <laughs> you can try. Uh, I guess I'll. Go back, lift. I've never known rest to play music before, I suppose. Um, <laughs> unbolt the door. And you right, unbolt, everybody. Hmm? You unbolt the door and open it. Um, some people rush in, some people rush out. Everybody out, this building is hereby condemned by order of his lordship. Uh, any further uh, presence on this building will be, in fact, considered trespassing. This lordship you keep referring to. Is it that the Artemis guy? Because I think he's pretty chill. What's no, it make is... all about him? It is in fact the uh the government the, the, the Prime Minister is who I'm referring to. <laughs> I thought this was a principality. Is Prince in charge? Well yes, but this is a territory of the the, the mainland. It is not in fact a sovereign nation unto itself. Nah, no, it's all island time, mate. Come and have a drink, you'll feel better. I would not put anything that's been in this building anywhere near my mouth. What, not even me? Especially not you. <laughs> Who knows what diseases are crawling on you? As, uh, as you look over, Fonz is standing by the bar, and the barman takes a, a rather filthy looking glass, pours some whiskey into it, and passes it to Fonz. Down in one. Down in one, down in one. Despite the antiseptic nature of alcohol, you have probably just caught about four diseases right now. Well, I've caught four new friends. Diseases and what your friends they mean only to do you harm. Nah, the but you can have some tingly feeling inside. That and is on in fact, your outsides. <laughs> that is probably the parasites. I, I know you don't have friends, Willie, and that's probably why you like this, but I want to try and be your mate. But you're making it really difficult for me. Why can't you be more like Jingo? Look at him, he's having a great time. I, I guess I'll look at Jingo and see what's Jingo doing. <laughs> more and more people are jumping up and down around Jingo as he's playing his djembe. Mm. The floor is beginning to shake and crack. Hey, life must have order. Or else, madness is the only other way. Say it's madness, but I say it's freedom. Freedom. I guess Jingo. Oh, mm -hmm. I should carry on. There's a loud crack <laughs> sound as the floor breaks beneath uh, Jingo, and you all plummet into the cellar. Exactly. <laughs> this is why we have standards. So I told like you this building should have been condemned. Three meters down from where you were, all lying on the floor amidst a lot of dust some old oh, no. uh, like flower bags and stuff in the cellar so i immediately want um to like pull my neckerchief up to use it like wear it like a mask okay God, who knows what we're gonna be catching down here this place is rife and infested you uh, as you sort of get yourself up you lift a couple of the boards under you and you find some dead rats <sighs> oh, that's um, good. can i roll to not be sick into my mask yes what would I roll? Uh, that would probably... Uh, strength. 
How strong is your constitution? How strong is your constitution? <laughs> it is my lowest stat. <laughs> 18 apparently. Yep, that's <laughs> just enough to stop yourself vomiting. You wet a couple of times. As you see people, some of them stand up with like bits of rats stuck to them, covered in dust. The taxi comes in from the outside and looks into the hole and goes, Oh no, how did this happen? How did... What happened to my floor? I warned you there were too many people in this building. The reason I condemned the damn place. Well, this is just also added the number of people I can have, because that is another floor. Fantastic. Thank you very much, my very short friend. These, these rats will that deal are with you yeah. later. You will hear from yeah. the authorities, I assure you. Can I use my hand, animal handling to check how long the rats have been dead? Like, were they dead before we squished them or after we squished them? Uh, be more awareness, but yes. Yep. Yeah. Alright, that is. Do any of these rats look glucosey in nature? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do they sparkle? <laughs> Oh, she's unkillable. Are any of the, any of the <laughs> French? And this is why Rat Run died, people. This <laughs> is why. Are any of the rats French? <laughs> it all secretly took place in this guy's like, basement. Oh, man. Oh, they, they look like some of them have been dead for a while. But some of them have been freshly killed. Oh, you know what, guys? Like, any place that's this crowded and has dead rats, that can be good. Someone will have gobbled them up on air. Also, it can't be Rat Run because Rat Run was set in Canada. <laughs> so I forgot about that, Toronto. <laughs> How do you know this isn't like future Canada? Or like past oh, Canada? Canada. Future no, like past Canada. Canada. Past Canada. Days, days of future past Canada. It once was a land. <laughs> I don't know the Canadian national anthem, I can't really riff off of it. <laughs> Okay, I guess I guess I'm just gonna leave because oh, you can't carry uh, a party. As you all sort of crawl your way out of the um, the holes in the floor, uh, we will end that time slot and go to the next one. So your options are to stay in the town square, where there seem to be more and more people arriving, and there seems to be a uh, a, st- a, a collection of people around a stage at the other end of town. They seem to be about to do a presentation of some kind. Or you, as you look over, you see a bunch of people in hoods running towards the lighthouse. Another bloody time share. Well, the music show. I am impressed on stage, but honestly, I just, I just need to wash this filth off of me. Who knows what was in that cellar? Rats. That's what was in the cellar. Yes, who knows what was on those rats? What they had been eating? What were? What what they were carrying? Okay. Well, I think maybe you shouldn't expect that stage, because, you know, that might not be safe. I am or... not part of self- of safety, or I have nothing to do with event planning, I'm afraid. I am strictly a federal health inspector. It would well, it not do... Look... It would not do to overstep my boundaries. I think you've overstepped plenty of boundaries. I as think you will you, find those are all within my purview as a federal health inspector. As, as you sort of look around and your health inspector nose sniffs, you smell a very strong smell of mushroom soup. I do like mushroom soup. Mushroom soup is the best soup. Coming from, as you as you look around, there seems to be a massive cauldron uh, in front of the stage and they seem to be giving bowls of soup. How clean's the pot? <laughs> the pot looks very old and rusted, but the, the bowls look uh, quite relatively new in comparison. Still, I, I wouldn't want to get tetanus again, not after that first time. Okay, while he's inspecting the soup, I want to get up on the stage and just have a little sash. Okay. You... Is there yeah, a presentation everybody... going on in the sun? No, <laughs> no, no, he gets up on stage and he starts um, playing his drum, drum bay. Everybody come and get some mushroom soup. As you oh. encourage them, the uh, sort of thin looking man with a beard looks at you quite quizzically, but as he realises you're encouraging people to get soupy, sort of nods at you like, kind of, yes. Make sure you've had your tetanus jabs, I suppose. Ah, oh, it's literally like, you, oh, what? And that's oh, what the night one. Uh, during one of your um, solos where you decide to slide across the stage, you misinterpret your own momentum and end up plummeting off the edge. Don't know. Drink up! You land in a bush. Quite prickly bush. 
And as you were fighting to get yourself out, a, a sort of older man with a long white beard uh, goes, Well, I think that we've had a nice warm-up now, so I guess it's my time to speak. Welcome, everyone. I hope you've had a good time. It's been and... absolutely awful. <laughs> I fell through a floor. I when fell I through a floor and landed on some land. About, about how I'm glad that so many of you are joining our congregation. It's been a wonderful time, and I'm, I'm so glad to have met all of you. I never said I would join anything. <laughs> well, now right. that all of you are here, I'm sure to see me, which I, I can't really be taking all the credit for, because I've only been, you know, doing this miracle thing for a couple of years now, but, you know, my ambition is there. And I'm going to tell you all about the joy of our father. And he starts going into a very deep philosophical, um, sort of, uh, almost prayer-like, um, sermon, which lasts about another twenty-five minutes. God, who has the time? <laughs> as it gets to as it gets to the end, um, he goes, "Right, well, that'll do for today. Uh, if anyone would like to, uh, you know, convert to a bit more of a religion and give up some of their sin, uh, myself and the vicar, he just towards the." Uh, Reverend Lysander, who's been standing next to Jungle Wall all evening after he got out of the bush, going, Yes, we've got stories about the horse and cart. This one especially, but the horse, the cart was too shiny, so the horse wouldn't pull it because he didn't want to get it covered in mud. And um, he goes back to the, the, the main sort of man saying, Right, well, that's lovely. So, I wish you all the best, and, uh, well, let's open the book, shall we? And he takes out, he, he turns to this, the thin man with the beard who hands him this book and he puts it down and he flips the page over and he go, he touches the hand on the next page as if time to paint the next one over and there's this almost small semicircle of light just comes forth from the book as he turns the page and he goes, oh that's nice isn't it? It's not nice to be able to see the book, not have to worry about being able to read in the dark. Mm, that would be quite handy, I suppose, when making making notes in dark cupboards, for example. Oh, yes, yes. If you've got to hide in a dark cupboard, it's always good to have a book. No, I'm not reading. I'm writing. Oh, writing usually, a story? Well, maybe one day we can see it, eh? No, usually I'm just taking notes of all the, uh, the flagrant disregard of regulations that I see on a daily basis. Right, Dad, uh, well, do we have anything else to do, Brian? And the man next to him just leans forward and whispers something. Oh, right, yes, uh, I have this sword. He takes out this massive uh, red-handled sword. I have to, 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 I've, uh, to pass this to Warren. Warren? Ah, here you go. This is to be delivered to you for all your help you've been. You know, being a soldier and all that. And this man in a cloak kind of awkwardly walks forward and takes the sword and looks very awkward about holding it up and then sort of hurriedly moves away. He goes, right, well, that's what I'm done. Uh, I don't think there's much else, so I'll be drawing us to a close. I hope to see you all tomorrow. I am getting flashbacks of every country fit I have ever been to. And as, as, he, as he does this, he sort of raises his arms out and you hear this incredibly loud bang from behind you and you, and there's this sound of like crunch as the front left of the stage um so the front right of the stage sorry gets like crumpled in by this massive cannonball landing into it all the people that were standing right close to it have all been like crushed into like bits as this huge cannonball just landed on the ground and goes hey team me what's happened here What's happened? Where did the cannonball a... come from? I can see you didn't have a proper event planner. <laughs> At this point you hear a... Damn it! From the distance. What do you want to do? It's pirates. I want to play a benefit concert. <laughs> so as the, the, the man in the robe walks down, he starts helping the people who have been badly injured by this cannonball landing. There's, there's blood everywhere. There's blood and limbs and everything everywhere. It's this huge, just 
pile of viscera. Mm. Yeah, so I suppose I should try and help people while trying not to get as trying to get as little blood on me as possible. I look back to the catacomb thing. Dead, like, you, as you look back, you see a cannon being slowly dr- like taken down the hill. I can't be good. Hey, uh, Willie, it... is your purview to like cannons and stuff? Because I've seen some dickheads taking one that way. No, I would have nothing to do with the licensing of, uh, of firearms, I'm afraid. That would be to do with the strategic arms branch of the government. Well, why don't you make a note of it and send a note to them and say, look, dickheads, you need to look at the list I can't be doing your job for you. Well, but I can do their job for them. No, you're just taking a note and sending it to them. I, I, I fail to see the difference, to be honest with you. Well, how are they going to get the information that there's some dickhead out here with an unlicensed cannon? I'm sure they have tabs on every cannon that is produced. Are you sure? Not really, it's not my job to know that. Oh, I didn't intend them oh, to be it. absolutely... <laughs> I didn't intend them to be a proper job with, but here we are. <laughs> I don't think you even have a job, Willie. I just think you like to stick your nose in other people's business, and then when it comes time to actually help a cut out, you won't. I mean, I do in fact have a job. Here is my card, and I'm going to hand, hand uh, Fonz my card. <laughs> We've all got cards! I've got one! I hand to my beer mat. That is not a card, that is a filthy, sodden beer mat. Made a card, it's a card! That, that is not what that means, no. Got my name on it! Write it there and everything! But, yes, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm impressed you can write, to be honest with you. Not about writing, about feeling! Partying! Going till dawn! Dawn mm. patrol! As you're debating what best to do, you see the man in the robe. Uh, he seems to be casting some sort of healing magic on people when they're um, <laughs> on the ground. He does seem to be healing a couple of people from like their badly broken limbs. Good, nice and sanitary. No sense, no chance of catching anything from cross-contamination when you're using spells. He sort of looks up at you and goes, all right, friend, could you help us out with some of these people? There's quite a lot of them been injured. Well, I can't really do much for them. I'm... Yes, I am. Like, I'm... maybe, you know, give them a pat on the back, tell them they're doing a good job, real brave. Unfortunately, m- much too small to, uh, to do any lifting of the corpses or anything like that, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't have a license to practice medicine, unfortunately. Athletes aren't allowed to practice medicine, yeah, that's it, that's what it is. I just can't. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't want to touch the blood. <laughs> Alright, well, if you just said that, we could, have, we could have worked around it. Can I play a benefit concert? <laughs> yep. You're For the on daily stage, divide. tapping your, your djembe as, he's, as all you hear in the, the uh, over the sound of the djembe is sort of crying and whimpering, whimpering of people who have been badly injured. How soon is too soon? <laughs> First responders, we're here for action. First responder, uh, I'm here to play a benefit concert. Benefit concert happening mid earthquake. Uh, come on, baby. Eleven. Your your I mean, bay does calm the mood, but uh, people are still crying and have all been badly injured. A good 30 people have been injured by this point. It's just a femur, it'll be fun. I mean, I don't have... I, I don't do... I don't have any healing. <laughs> I I got tracking. Yeah. I can go look for that cannon. Oh, a- AJ's uh, responded to your picture, Barry. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have to let that ride a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> give it a day or two. Give it a day or two. Uh... We're gonna we're gonna leave it until this episode comes out because we got you, AJ. Might we got while. you. I thought I was wondering. Uh, Barry is pretending to have had a kid. Yes, it was my brother who had the kid. But Jeff, he made me he made me lie and gaslight everyone. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not even gonna deny it. It was 100% me. Ooh. Take that, AJ. Uh, right. No one tell off. my brother that I have claimed his child as his own. Well, the, day, the night continues, and the benefit concert goes long into the night. Any more followers? Uh, yeah, let's just give you another 10 followers for the benefit concert and you roll the to be well. Woo! I so, feel like you're getting it really excited, but surely it'll make you more terrified the more fans you have. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> when they all turn on me. When they all letter. turn on you. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't have sold out, man. You sold out. Will Lisa! They're all, they're all turned to Mana Montana. We're not here to listen to the new album. Play the play the classics. No one wants to hear you playing the harmonica. So as the the night winds up, um, and you you don't really have anywhere to sleep, so are you just gonna try and find a makeshift place, or what are you gonna do? I feel like there would be relief tents after such an event. I mean, you did, there are a couple of tents put up very quickly by the, the trader to try and... Um, yeah, but I imagine they'll be... To be put. Yeah, they'll be full of people with, like, leg off or something going on. What about the lighthouse? Can we go sleep in there? I don't um, know a lot about lighthouses. Do they have beds in? They do usually have a bed. It might be the best option, I'm afraid, unfortunately. But sometimes it needs do, I suppose. Well, the next morning... Are you heading to the lighthouse for the next morning, then? I yeah. guess for somewhere to sleep. Well, the next morning, um, as you're sort of helping around in the town square and the um, benefits concert continues uh, until dawn, um, eventually you, you see that the sound of cannon fire is starting up again by the lighthouse, but and the town square seems busy again. What do you want to do? Keep it good. I think we should go and talk to these dickheads about their cannons. They can't just be firing at any people, that's just not the same. And they are. <laughs> as much as I loathe the term taking the piss of it now. Um, I'm, yes, I, I, do you know what? I can't believe I'm saying this, Fonz, but I think you're right. I think we're going to have to investigate this and contact the proper authority. Well, I knew I'd get you on side. Well, the cannons do have I a knife will... down, so, yeah. <laughs> There is, in fact, a German opera that does have something like a 24-piece cannon section. Nice. So it, it's not unheard of for it to be used in music. Where it's down there, that's where we go in. Go get you that sand. So you head over to the lighthouse, and as you, you get close, you hear the sound of this the sound of, can, of a cannon being fired about every couple of minutes. And as you round the last sort of corner towards this, this sort of bit itself, you see a man it's an oldish looking man, uh, swigging occasionally from a clear liquid from a bottle and, f and firing a cannon, then cursing loudly, then filling more of this quite very dark coloured powder into the cannon and stuffing another cannonball in. What do you want to do? What's he firing the cannon at? He's firing it like off a cliff. So, I am not personally with the firearms services, but I suspect that operating one while drunk is a flagrant uh, breach of regulation. Uh, maybe he's just upset, you know? Needs a friend. Go have uh, a talk with him, have a drink with him, see what's what. I think that's more your purview as you previously mentioned. No problem there, Willie, my old son. I will go deal with this bloke directly. Bonds, sort of, it's up. Alright, we're gonna do it. It's time around Like, good day, mate. You look like you're having a bit of a rough time. Oh, Wanna this, talk about it? This, this very ragged looking man turns around. He's wearing like a almost fishnet vest with some very thick, wispy grey hair poking through it and a very ragged beard and a blue, a blue sort of small hat. And he goes, Ah! <laughs> Why are you there? Uh, yeah. Why are you bothering the Honourable Captain Billy? Ah, oh, well, Captain, he's like this. You know, I tied one on last night. It was a pretty big night. It was a benefit concert. Don't know if you've seen that. Well, I had a few too many, and like my head's banging. 
much like the beginning, so if we could, like, put that on the kibosh for a little bit, and you can tell me what's, uh, trouble, yeah. What? You're talking oh. rubbish, I... I need to get the cannon working, it's, it's, it's broken. Wh why do you need it working? He takes uh, a long swig of this very, as I said, the clear liquid from the bowl, and as he kind of breathes towards you, you feel the very strong smell of very sweet alcohol. Oh, that smells good. It needs to work. It needs to shoot the ball over there. Over where? Over there. He just vaguely points out to see. Uh, yeah, had mermaids. Just, he just looks at you and goes, the whale's coming back. We can't uh, let it. It's got to be repelled. Oh, you definitely can't have whales coming in. Like, they, they should be in the sea. They can't be coming back up here. Exactly. You, you, you get it. And he, he, oh, he leans you down. Get it, Captain? He leans down to a large box and he pulls out a bottle of clear liquid and he hands it to you. And he goes, yeah, you get it. All right, join me. Oh, I will. He clinks <laughs> bottles with you and he again slugs this uh, very strong liquid. I'll take a swig and then I will offer to look at the cannon with my tinkering. Uh, do me a uh, do me a d20 roll. D20. Say, Jingo, do you, do you think it's working? <laughs> I can't really tell. Natural oh, one. <laughs> The second, as oh, soon as you oh, take whoa. a swig of this, your vision goes black. You feel incredibly intoxicated almost immediately and start stumbling. Oh, wow. It's not my 12th birthday all over again. At this point, you just hear, yeah. Get so hard and get used to it. But it keeps you sane on ships. And then you just hear the cannon fire again. So you. is the cannon actually working? Or is he just... The cannon is working and it's firing... Um, it's firing, and you just hear him mutter about the amount of powder, and then put more powder in next time. I think he's just pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, I'm not much of a seafaring man, but isn't it traditionally harpoons that he used to capture whales? Our, our harpoons, they don't hear coming. Yes, Which is so... fine if you're sneaky, but if you want to just scare the bastards off, you need a cannon. Well, I would also like to know who's going to pay for the damages to the town, to the town centre as well. Ah. After one of your cannonballs took a few people's legs and damaged a considerable amount of property. They were visitors, they don't matter. Hey now, hey my war business! I have no idea what either of you are saying. <laughs> He's fake. Ah, uh, you look like you could do it some as well. And he leans into the box and takes out another bottle of liquid and offers it to you. I'm good, thank you very much. It's very sterile. I'm making it with my urine. <laughs> as sterile as urine is, I am good. Thank you, but I will have to, uh... I will have to decline. Sit yourself. He just throws the bottle lightly back in the box. Can we see... Is there anything else in the box, or is it just bottles of piss boots? It's just bottle, <laughs> bottles of very clear liquid. Mm. Well, I well, it's very well least, hydrated. I was going to say, we know the man's properly hydrated, at least. <laughs> oh. Hans is just looking at the bottle, just like, oh. <laughs> Hans can just yeah, about like... see the bottle at this point. It's not the worst thing Hans has drank, surely. Can I like try and lull the man to sleep? With the lullaby. Yeah. 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 On oh. the djembe. <laughs> djembe lullaby. The most soothing of all instruments. The the six piece drum set. <laughs> that, as, you, as you walk over and start tapping, you go, uh, yeah, it's, it's like a small drum you you have there. I mean, you know, a cannon is just a large drum, it just makes up one second and he makes it make the, the loudest boom you've made it here, here so far. See, it's like a drum, but iron. I mean, I do like the sound of the cannon, I just don't like the sound of you. 
Oh. It's full aid. He, he sort of takes a swig from, it, from the bottle again and goes, Yeah, well, I, 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 my days as a singer are long past. To what did you used to sing? I used to sing in a band. We, we used to tour around all the mainland cities. What was your band's name? Maybe I've we were, heard of them. We were called the Captain Salt Band. Is that you? You're Captain Billy Salt? Yes, yeah, me. I'm Captain Billy. Seems rather narcissistic. Captain really. William Salt. He salutes badly with his bottle and then pours the rest into his mouth. Accidentally glasses himself. <laughs> Very much. Fuck, fuck, fuck. He like does a slow fuck. Fuck, fuck. I'm gonna be honest, if I was playing like any other character, I'd probably would have tipped his chair over the cliff by now. <laughs> yeah, that's so, it. Bond's conceded out, he's gonna have a tinker with the cannon. All see right. if he can make it work. So he believes Billy that it doesn't work. Okay. You you oh. tinker a bit with it, and the next one <laughs> Billy fires, the cannonball seems to go about four times as far. Ooh. And he goes, see, that's the swarm of that. Have another nice. bottle. Right. He, takes, he takes another bottle from the, the thing and offers it to you. Well, I very good. The bottle, but I just dash it away for now. But, oh, I'm on a drink pace, but it does work. It's, it's amazing. And he, he just turns around and he just pours a little bit of the liquid into the black powder and starts mixing it. It works even better as an accelerant. Ah! Oh, you have to give me a recipe. Well, so, just taps his nose a bit and goes, The secret's on the inside. The inside of your nose? Well, I, I, I wouldn't advise starting in by feast of their own. <laughs> I do remember years ago there was this trend when you were pouring alcohol into their eyeballs to get drunk quicker. Maybe that's his... No, you don't want to do that. You'll end up like, no, I guess. Yes, I oh, can what? imagine. There was quite a few now, I guesses, back uh, back in the hospital around that time. Not all were called gas, obviously. I'm just extending <laughs> the metaphor. Well, I think you need to learn when to let it go, mate. But... I will let it go when things are at a satisfactory standard. No, 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 really, this is your problem, mate. You just, you just round up too tight. You need to let go. Not everything has to be as it says on a bit of paper. Do you want to no, catch no. tape poems? Constant vigilance is the only thing we have to protect us from tape. Nothing can protect you against tight worms, mate. If it's your time to tight worms, the worms will get you. The tenacious no. little buggers. I never. Blind already. I never touch pork, and for that reason, I have never had a tape worm. And I should know I hold a Snickers bar under my butthole <laughs> once a week to check. Where's the my Snickers ears. bar? My ears perk up when people. <laughs> when. when when funds keep saying, let it go, and I'm like, there might be something in that. <laughs> the Snickers is a, well, it's tapeworm bait, really, and if you, you hold one under your exit, it will, and you have one, which I've never had, but if you do have one, it pops its head out, then you can wrap it around a pencil and extract it that way. What if your tapeworm's on a diet? Tapeworms do not go on diets. Well, not how well they... if it's got a nut allergy. Tapeworms yeah, do not have nut allergy, allergy and nor do you have diabetic tapeworms before you ask that. <laughs> you seem to know a lot about these worms. <laughs> I do, like I said, yeah, vigilance is Nobody doesn't have a tapeworm. Yes, they have worms. I still want to go said, by where the fuck did this tapeworm snickers thing come from? Oh, that's just something from when I was a kid. <laughs> this has been mentioned before, we so like, where did you get that from? From, like, school. I've completely forgot why we're talking to this man. 
Because he's <laughs> shooting a cannon at whales. Not whales, Wait, the you... country, whales, the creature. <laughs> I, I've Wait, been asked what kind of. Make that cannon better. I've been asked what kind of school did you go to that teaches you to wave a Snickers under your ass? I mean, it wasn't taught at school. It's like, you know, you go to school and kids say dumb shit. I can't convert. Well, that definitely wasn't a thing down south, so. I don't think that was a thing up here either. Look, maybe we just have more tapeworms up north, okay? <laughs> <laughs> We're famed for our tapeworms up here. <laughs> <laughs> our castle, our coastline, and our tapeworms. <laughs> I once caught a tapeworm, it was seven meters long! Hey, that's not even a very long tapeworm, mate. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how long it takes. That's long, baby man. numbers. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. The largest species of tapeworm can grow to be about 30 foot long. <laughs> 30 foot long is um, 10 meters, sorry. The longest the more one. You know. The longest one uh, is apparently was about 80 feet. Is that in a whale or something? No, that was in a people. <laughs> a people. Oh, the human centipede, yeah. Look, the, look, the Daily Mail, so you know you can trust it. The Daily Mail, so you know it's probably bullshit, but yeah, carry on. 59 foot tapeworm oozes out of Thai man's rectum after he went to the doctors about extreme flatulence. But the Daily Mail would be the kind of place that would tell you to put a Snickers under your butt. To be it... fair, it is also the exact same story is on, with the exact same pictures also on news18.com and the India Times. It oozes out. Oozes. Yeah. Well, the tape. 18 meters of tapeworm. 18 meters of tapeworm. Anyway, getting back to the plot. Yes, getting back to it. Vigilance is the only shield we have against tapeworms. <laughs> right, I'm getting bored of talking to this man. Can we go somewhere? Okay. Well, you know what, we'll just, we'll just move the time slot on. So, at this point, it's getting to the middle of the day, and you see the tide begin to go out. And as you see the tide begin to go out, you see multiple carts appearing from the town square that are heading down, um, down the sort of along this along a path which leads to the other side of the island. And as you sort of look confused at what's going on, you just hear Billy going, "Ah, they're going to the wrecks." So, going to wrecks. Your options are to stay in the lighthouse, to go to the town square, or go to the wrecks. Those must be the carts that were the books about. Oh, well, you definitely need to go see them then, don't you? Yeah. Alright. Come on. Right. There yep. might be something for you to inspect there, Willy. Yeah, so they'd be careful of standing water, I suppose. We head along the path and you follow the, the trail that leads down to... Um, now the tides out, you just see these hundreds and hundreds of very sharp stones and these massive shipwrecks that are sort of like... We're very much embedded on the rocks. There are we like a bunch, really be... there are a bunch of people who are like desperately trying to climb down from the ships onto dry land, and there are also the what looks like the um, the trader you remember from putting up all of the stuff the night before, and the innkeeper seem to be like grabbing like bits of planks and sailcloth and stuff and throwing them onto their cart. What do you want to do? I hope you are not intending to use this. Refuse to repair your floor. And what if I say it is my house? That building is already condemned. It shall have no further work well, if done it's upon already it. condemned, then it's no longer your problem, is it? No, it is still very much my problem as of Section 72B of the uh, local health inspection code. And now, can I pull out a notebook and show them Section 72B? You can take out a notebook and show him. He takes it from you, he again rips it into pieces and drops it on the floor. You know that is federal property. Oh, my heart bleeds. They are, they, they tend to be full of blood, I suppose. Um, you will be billed for a replacement book. Of course I am. My name is Captain Billy. No, you've already told me your name, it's Petunia. Yes. You thought I wasn't listening, didn't you? <laughs> Captain Petunia Billy, yes, that is. Mm, yes, if you, if ever you say a junior battle, and they, as, he, as they go back to like wrestling with the the bits of wood, how come there's so much shipwreck if they've got a lighthouse? 
Isn't that supposed to prevent that kind of thing? I expect it has something to do with a drunkard firing cannonballs into the sea. Well, no! Certainly not the whales, mate. You can't fault him for that. They're tricky buggers. So, uh, it's not his fault that some other buggers slacking on the lighthouse. Can... These people aren't doing anything about it. Can that I use one's my... even trying to pretend to be Billy. That's just wrong, that is. <laughs> Can I use my inspection skills? to uh, try and see if there's any cannonball damage to these rocks. Sure. We're just gonna, oh, is that, would that just be awareness, I guess? That would be awareness, yeah. Dot. That's not a zero, that says hyphen. Ten. Um, there are one or two parts that could be cannonballs, but you're not sure enough. Well, I feel like I'm a man who would not... Uh, I wouldn't describe myself as a reasonable man, and so that to me means that these <laughs> boats have in fact been sunk by cannonballs. Uh, you see, look, there is clear cannonball damage to the mast of this uh, ship. As you... Does it mean that it was Billy's cannonball? Could have been anyone's cannonball. There's plenty of cannonballs, see... it be. Do you see any other people around here with a cannon shooting I'm it into sure... the I'm sure one of the ships might have had a cannon on them. Could have shot it at uh, themselves. Listen, I don't know what you got against Billy. He's a good bloke. Yeah, he makes alcohol out of his own fist, but, you know... We all gotta do what we gotta do to get by these days! I think he is doing rather a bit more than just getting by. In fact, he is a danger to the society and the environment. Not to mention the disgusting habit of his piss liquor. You should give it a try, mate. It's actually quite good. You just have to I'm... not think about the fact that it's made out of piss. I do not believe I could force the thought out of my head for long enough. Ah, oh, but once you drink it, it's definitely out your head. Everything's out your head. You're off your head. I am quite all right, thank you. Now, I uh, I think we should inform the local authority of Billy's doing as he has clearly sunk these ships. Merchant I'm... vessels, I'm sure. Oh, I... no, you're wrong. I'm going to find one of these blokes on those ships and I'll get them to tell you. Drain away. The Billy had nothing to do with this! Blokes on these ships, they're all sunk. If there's anyone left on them, they'll be dead. That's they're not dead! Hey, excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me, we're busy having an argument. Can you pipe down for a minute? <laughs> if you could head me down once you're finished. Yes, yes, but yeah. hold on, we're rather I'm occupied. No, I'm done with you! Wrong it! We are not done here until I see we're done. Oh, I'm done! You try to stop me! I will, you, I will write you up. So help me God. Doesn't matter if you write me up, I can't wait! Well, you will still be indebted <laughs> for the fine, whether you can read it or not. And I'm going to write up a fine for obstinance. <laughs> okay. You write up a small ticket, you hand it to Fonz. No. You'll be expected to pay that within one working month. I don't work! Ah. One. You'll working never month. Catch me. It's a time frame, not a not a requirement. It will be you will be requested to pay you are requested to pay that within thirty one days. Failure to do so will require will result in repossession and possible imprisonment. Never been possessed, so I can't be repossessed. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you don't have a great deal of uh, worldly possessions. You'll just have to be put in the slammer, I'm afraid. Jokes on you, mate! I love the slammer. Well, great. Why don't you go there now and save us all the bother? Because I'm trying to save someone, dickhead. But you keep talking to me. But while they're arguing, I'm just gonna help these little girls out because as you they ain't doing it. As um, uh, Jingle looks up, there's a, a group of people in quite uh, quite a lot of finery just looking down. Um, there seems to be two women, two men, and a, a couple of small children. And the one at the front is a woman. Just going, hey, excuse me, could, could you help us down? Yeah, yeah, I can help you down. Hold on, darling. How are you going to get her down? She's about maybe uh, 12 foot up. I don't know. 
<laughs> How exactly did you get up there, child? Oh, we we were on the ship when it broke. See, and what caused the ship to break? Are you listening here, Fonz? Oh, I don't really know. It was it, there was this large snapping sound, and then there was almost, lots of water. Yes, almost like a cannonball hit a portion of the ship. Nah, cannons go boom, mate, not snap. Everyone knows that. The cannon itself goes boom, but the, the, the ship itself would go snap upon the impact, I'm sure. Uh, either way, uh, our, our party here need to get uh, to get off the ship. Could you could you help us, please? Oh, uh, is there any rope on that ship? Because uh, we uh, don't have any. Uh, not really. No. Oh, I've literally got. I've got nothing in my inventory that could help us. I have a mirror, some cutlery, some antitoxin, and a crowbar. <laughs> a clipboard. <laughs> I suppose if we get truly desperate, we could could you make your way into the lower sections of the ship and we could perhaps Look, break you out? That's the second class uh, cabins. We, we couldn't go in there. I suppose you're stuck then. Good luck. <laughs> well, so it's either this way, lady. You can either be rich and dead, or you can be rich, look down and all the poor people on your way out to not be in debt. Either way. Well, uh, I suppose, um, Jonathan, Jonathan, could you open the door? At this point, they, you, they're sort of moving back and uh, It appears to be stuck. Hmm. I'm all out of ideas. Why don't you throw her up your crowbar? That opens doors. I, uh, I'll be honest, I don't have very good a throwing arm, and it's quite heavy. <laughs> well, if you end it to me, I'll throw her up your crowbar. Do you know what? Just... I'll hand it over to Fonzie. Just keep it. Honestly. I, I, I don't want it anymore. Can I use my strength to drop the crowbar at this woman? Yep. At the woman or near the woman. And be very specific. Guess we're going with the first answer. <laughs> 13. No. You hurl the crowbar. It dunks the woman straight in the face and she staggers backwards. You always had to open the door, love. Sorry about your face. Uh, she stands up, she's got quite obviously a broken nose. Mm, yes, I would wash that if I were you, and uh, open wounds don't... are a clear vector for infection. Don't worry about it, there's some uh, blokes down here who can fix them. He fix those blokes that were crushed by them cannons. There was nothing to do with Billy! Different cannons! Until you can offer another plausible explanation, I am convinced it is your Billy. Freak raid of cannons? I am sure there has been no recorded incident of a freak rain of cannons. Why it's a freak rain? No one's recorded with freak rains. I would expect that freak rains are the ones that get recorded most often when they happen. Ah, uh, it's too freaky. Makes everyone nervous. <laughs> hmm, quiet. You might just be onto something there, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, can I? Oh, I want to pull. I want to pull my two compatriots aside. Yeah. Uh, weren't we meant to be looking for uh, someone like a woman and a child? I came here to do my health inspection and nothing else. <laughs> well, we were looking for him. He's just a dickhead. Yeah, love. Yeah. What's your name? My name. Yeah! Uh, uh, my name is Catherine. Ah, you got your little leg with you? So, you know, as her still trying to hold um, a handkerchief <laughs> against her face, as blood is pouring down her hand. Uh, yeah, yes, my, my son. Are you perhaps yeah, married? Uh, hmm? Yeah, uh. Your husband was worried about you, love. We come to just have a little chat with you. Yes. Once you get down here, we can have a proper little date. I've got some lovely liqueur that you'll just sort you right out. Sort out that nose treat. Medicinal. You, after about you know, 20 minutes of them fighting with the door inside, and eventually get down, um, 
they get through the hatch downstairs and eventually get get to a more decent level to actually get off the ship. And after a while, there's just the group of the sort of royalty-based people sitting next to me. Oh, that's nice. And you hear someone going, Oh, excuse me, my name's Jonathan, and uh, I would like to thank you for the crowbar here. Does it, does it belong to one of you? Keep it, honestly. Uh, hey, now I'm I'd have no use for a crowbar. Well, you see, I'm, I'm not one of the criminal classes. Oh, oh no, 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 Johnny! What you do? You keep that, right? You put it above your fireplace next to your fence of swords, and then next time you have a soiree, you might be like, What's going on there, Johnny boy? What you got a crowbar for? Then you can tell them how you heroically rescue people from a shipwreck with that very crowbar. Well, uh, that would be an interesting story of the cigars and brandy. Yes, it would. And I would love to hear that story one day. I can only hope to be as fancy as As the people are getting to hear the story, you were there. Shut your mouth. As the people are getting off the ship, can I like serenade them? You know, like people when they get off an airport going to like IB for somewhere. We've got like the kettle drums and stuff to like. What are you gonna play the Venger boys? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, why not? We're going the to the jambe boss. <laughs> Whoa, we're going to play the jambe. <laughs> gonna play the jambe. That was the Venger boys, wasn't it? Yes. That's all right. Then. Whoa. I don't feel we're like we're on an island. Oh, there's a dickhead with a cannon. <laughs> no, it's only a suit. You, you, you carry on playing, but the the the, uh, the clientele are getting off the boat don't seem to care much for your song. Oh, no fans today. It's no. alright, Jingo. I have. They're not Jim. It just looks like I'm more of a musician for the common man, not the super rich. Yeah. Well, I suppose there's more of the common man. They're super rich, I suppose that's why they call them the common man. And I'm the most common man, and I fucking love you. I am. Sh I hope to God you are not a common man. <laughs> I hope there is but the one of you. <laughs> well, no, I am a triplet, but there's something really fun about just playing a dickhead. <laughs> right, well, you as you help the last one down, you you see. As you're wondering what best to do with these people, you hear, Oh, hello there. It seems you have, you have found some f- Hello there. Ooh, My name I is Reverend have... Lysander. How are you, how are you doing? You, you, are you welcome to our, welcome to our island? And the priest just starts stop shaking everyone's hand. Yeah. Weren't you supposed to take these two back, Jingo? Oh, uh, yeah, I think we were. Surely you should bundle them into the back of a- boat or a cart and be on with it. Yeah, uh, Catherine, let me have a look at that nose of yours there, love. It looks pretty crook. So as, uh, as, she, as you saw Tarver, she goes, oh, before you go, I, I'm sure I've, I recognize you, my child. What are you doing here? And the girl with her, her face covered in blood just goes, uh, uh, I'm here, I'm here to see Artemis. Oh, Artemis. He's a wonderful, wonderful chap. He's he's done so much for the church. Um, but uh, if you'd like to come with me, we can we can uh, we can uh, go find him. Uh, but come on, mate, You've got to look at that nose. His voice is terrible. What's happened to that? Do nobody's fault. Yes, I should what, think. What, what happened to your nose? Injury? If you don't mind me asking. She makes a sort of eye contact towards. Uh, I got that towards. I can remember, never remember your character already. Me, I am Willem, William Scroll. I, I got that towards William and then. Sort of no, no, William. Work out what to say. With an N. William uh, Scroll. I'm not used to this keyboard yet. <laughs> well, I any believe. Hint when he makes eye contact? Um, I don't know why you're looking at me. It wasn't me who threw the crowbar. Oh, you got put in the face with the crowbar. Oh dear oh, God, we'll Come, so. come, we'll, we'll get out and look at it immediately. That, that sounds horrible. I was gonna look at it. Well, I've done a lot for this this community as well. Can I meet Artemis? Oh, I suppose you could. Uh, just... And we could talk about we could talk about this book deal about the cart. 
Would Artemis by any chance be the de facto leader of this community? Oh, Artemis is a wonderful chap. Eh? He wears a sort of long white robe and a beard. You, you must have seen him at the, the meeting last night. He's yes, got the, um, the sort of very nice uh, country accent. Yes, he, he appears to be the guy in charge. I would like to speak to myself. I have a few uh, issues I would wish to raise about this community. Oh, well, uh, we're going to... Uh, let's go to the farmland then and we'll, we'll see what we can find. So as the slot time slot ends and the next one begins, um, you notice there are a bunch of people gathering in the farmland. And there's also a bunch of people gathering in the town hall. So it's town square. Um, I assume you wanted to follow the reverend to the farmland? Yes, I have a few complaints to make to the, uh, to the leader of this community. So you head off to the, the farmland, and as you uh, arrive in this in the area, there's there's not that many people there. There's um, the sort of straggly man with the, the beard from the night before, who seems to be uh, in the process of like dicing up some mushrooms to make another pan of soup. And as he's dicing up these mushrooms, the, 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 uh, there seems to be some a small argument breaking out uh, as to what's going on. Uh, apart from that, there just seems to be a bunch of people just slowly sort of gathering in as time goes on and they're building a stage. What would you like to do? The first one went so well. Yeah. You know what I want to do when there's a stage. <laughs> Alright. So Jingo goes up and starts uh, testing the stage, playing his djembe. What's the rest oh, are you going to do? Do you people eat anything other than mushrooms? Yeah, you go up, you ask the man dicing up the mushrooms that, and he looks over and goes, well, it's, uh, it's part of our diet, isn't it? Uh, they grow quite, uh, quite uh, gloriously in the cave, you know. <coughs> they, they've got a nice spice to them, you know, they always make good soup. It's always good, I, that, important to have good soup. I just hope you have a more varied diet. There's as nothing uh, more detrimental to the immune system than a poor diet. As Jingu starts doing proper djembe solos on the stage. It's a 19. So that's definite djembe solos. And more people, more of the sort of idle people are coming over to watch him. Um, as the straggly man with the beard looks at, uh, at William and goes, Well, uh, yeah, there's different types of mushrooms here. The bowl cat, the, uh, the trumpeter, the big nose tread. There are, but aside from the poisonous ones, they all tend to have much the same in nutritional value. Well, uh, I mean, it's still good food. I oh, it is absolutely well. a fantastic source of protein, but a diet needs more than protein. Well, You're getting uh, enough vitamin C, well, man. I did speak to the baker about getting some loaves, but because there wasn't any wheat to go around, we couldn't get any bread. You need to make sure you're getting plenty of vitamins in your micronutrients, my good man. Well, like uh, butter and stuff in that uh, rat infested cellar? Yes, and nobody is to go in there, and especially no one is to consume any of the food, and I use the term very loosely, well, food in that establishment. Well, the only problem we're really having is uh, we don't have much more fresh water. This is all these people you keep arriving, and it takes quite a lot of water, as you can imagine, to fill this cauldron. Have you, you considered, to know anything? Have you considered have using the old drunk still to, uh, to purify it? Frank. I had him one of the bottles of the clear liquid and tell him. Wow, wonderful. He just pours it in without thinking. Excellent. <laughs> That's great. Do you know there's more of this? Ah, uh, no. Sorry, mate. That was my last one. But uh, I can get you some more later. Oh, wow, wonderful. If you could, yeah. I mean, we're running out of fresh water, so anything that sort of uh, helps with it is more than appreciated. Oh, no worries, mate. And, um, oh, you wouldn't mind if I had a little, little cheeky taster. Eh? See how that's. Oh yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I yeah, take so a the mushroom soup bubbles in front of you, and he offers you a small cupful. Yep. Take it. And I don't right. it. <laughs> Roll a d20. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Sixteen. Um, everything fade. Everything around you slowly leads to monochrome and then the colours of everything become incredibly vibrant. Like oh. everything just seems almost bursting with colour. Slightly Jenga! Slightly <laughs> wuthering music... and just it, lo it looks like a very seventies music video. Oh 
Jingo, man. You need to try this. How does the music it's feel? It's excellent. Oh, did I get any new followers for uh, my djembe solo? You're getting three. <laughs> you're saying a roll of 300 is quite low, but yeah. You've gained three more fans. It's more fan than uh, Scrub has, I am sure. Oh. Like, wait, till we, wait till we start handing this soup out to people. <laughs> so do you have any of the mushrooms on hand that you've been using to make this? Oh, well. Well, I, I, I pride myself as a mushroom vendor. What kind of thing are you after? I'm quite curious as to what you've made to use this soup specifically. Oh, well, we use uh, some bone cap and uh, a little bit of trumpeter and some uh, big nose thread. I'm not familiar with the... Is that a, a local name? Oh, big yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's this one. It just takes a small like um, leather bag out of his pocket and then takes a couple of dried mushrooms out. They do all resemble like a very big nose with like a big uh, red dot at the end, so like a sort of pimple in the end of a nose. Yeah, it looks like uh, the old Governor Fred's nose. Yes, and you're sure these are safe for consumption? Oh yeah, yeah. Eating them all my life. Hmm. You're not giving much credence to your claim. <laughs> he sort of looks at you, sighs, takes one, holds it up and eats it in front of you and goes, See? They're completely safe. Hmm. How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> Both hands or just that one? Just this one. He sort of tilts his head slightly and then gives you the number that you are actually holding up. How did you know I was holding the number up? <laughs> well, you told me that was, that was asked me how many you're well, holding well, up. What do you want me to do? I thought you meant, like, I thought you meant me. I was like, what? How did you know I was holding <laughs> my hand up? Because it's you, Bill, I know you do these things. <laughs> but, hmm, uh, making sure that there's no illicit trade going on in this hamlet. Well, I mean, if you want that kind of mushroom, I can help you out, but I don't carry them. No, I am not with the narcotics group, I'm afraid, but perhaps you want to talk to them. I mean, if you'd like a mushroom to help you enjoy the evening, I can sort you out. Oh, I'd definitely like some mushroom to help I... me enjoy the evening. I am enjoying myself plenty, thank you. I don't yeah, think you are, Willie. Change your mind, you were uh, more than welcome. Uh, just come back and uh, shout my name. I'm Brian. I, I am quite certain, Brian. Well, no problem, no problem. But as I said, if you change your mind and you like something to, you know, slide that stick out, as it were, you're more than welcome. I'm just, just going to make a note of the name Brian. <laughs> just to pass on to, uh, to the right people. All right. If I don't stay, I'm still. So as as right, as Fonz is watching the most uh, <laughs> basically the, uh, the most wonderful light show they've ever seen, and yeah. uh, the most wonderful light show they've ever seen, and uh, Jingo 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 keeps going on with uh, playing the djembe. Uh, we will roll into the next time zone, which I imagine you're staying at the the farm for. No, we started a festival. We're going all night, baby. <laughs> yeah. So you stay at the farm, um, and after about 10-20 minutes of Jingu playing, the man in the white robe turns up. Goes, oh, wonderful! I thought I didn't think you'd be back tonight, but it's appreciated. You warmed the ground up. Now, please, everyone, go and have your soup, and we'll start our little congregation. Yeah, lads, soup's smashing. So everyone helps himself to soup, and they. I am um, quite fine not having any soup. <laughs> No, I'm definitely not having any soup. I know what oh, is in my uh, soup. Fonz is definitely having more soup. <laughs> so ev everyone seems to be slightly more um, more swaying as the congregation happens. At the end of it all, um, the, the sun goes, Well, that'll do us. As before, if anyone would like to, uh, you know, repent their sins, I'm going to be about for a while longer. Um, is... Sorry. And also, we've got these nice scales to give out to someone. Uh, where's Denise? The wonderful Denise from the town, the town square. The uh, the lovely trader's daughter. She she can have these lovely scales. And they give these scales to this girl who's quite confused that she's being handed scales, but is still quite like you know showing them off, quite happy. It was lovely. Right. Well, now that's happened. If anyone would like to uh, repent. Myself and Father Lysander will be about here. Just come up and give us a wee chat. We're always here for you. 
does anyone else find it strange that this village, town, whatever we're in, that can't even procure flour, somehow has all of these and fancy swords and scale sets and the like to just give away? Do you remember when we came in, like, everybody gave a thing? Like, maybe they're just gathering up all the things that everybody's giving in, and then, What's like, that? they like pick out one other thing and they pick out a person like hey you you're a great black you can have this thing what i do remember is a lot of shipwrecks with cannon damage and an old drunk firing cannons off a cliff ah uh, no he's just trying to fight for whales man gotta fight whales, whales. we have yet to see but... well, of course we haven't seen them mate they're in the sea and Billy's doing a bloody great job of keeping them in there. But I've been doing a lot for this community, and I haven't received anything yet. But I'll have been able to help. Hey, Jenga, maybe, maybe they, they haven't can. found the right thing for you. They're maybe trying they to find that down for you as well. Yes, maybe they'll find a kazoo in the next ship that they mysteriously crashes. Well, as the as the night as the sort of time passes on, eventually. The, um, you notice that the woman that you say that you saved from the ship earlier, talking to the man, the sort of the very man with the white beard, and she seems very happy and she gives him a hug and he's like, "Yes, well, you know, I bless you and I forgive you for all your sins." Could you possibly have done, Kylie? And she, when she looks towards you and you say that, she just goes very pink and goes, oh, "Think things that only a married woman should do, and even then, I regret them." Oh, well, you know, if you live your life with regrets, you'll end up like Willie and nobody wants that. I have a more like me. no regrets, except coming on this extended and rather protracted journey with you all. Well, everyone See else, what I mean? Well, everyone here, would any of you like a little bit of uh, repentance? I have oh, not really sinned really once in my life. I live a clean and healthy and humble lifestyle. So you've done yes, nothing wrong good, ever to confess to? Not a thing. Oh, that's good then. How about the two of you? Either of you like a little bit of repentance? Oh, I am sure that uh, Fonz here has plenty to repent. Well, no, really. But, yeah, I'm not perfect, but, you know, nobody's perfect. And so I just got to work it. You know, you live and you learn it. <laughs> he, he taps you on the shoulder with his hand and goes, well, I repent you. You're gonna be free of sin now. That's all right then. How about yourself? And he taps Jingu on the shoulder. Would you like to be free of sin too? No. Uh, I don't think I have any sin. Well, that's fine. He just gently taps you a couple of times and goes, You're definitely free now. You've been forgiven in the sight of the Lord. Excuse me, Mr. Artemis. Do you have a... You don't happen to have a, a sort of an absolution license, do you? An absolution license? Yes, it is of course known that all religious figureheads oh, in this I land must have a license that. to practice their religion. Let me have a look through me book. And, um, oh, I forgot to say that during the ceremony there was the book open again. There was the semicircle of light. Everything seemed sort of as magical as it was before. But he, he takes the book out of his pocket and he flicks through it and he goes. No, I don't have an absolution license. I do, however, have a priest license. Is that enough? Can I have a look at the priest license? <laughs> oh, sure. And he scrolls through his book again, he pulls it out, and it's a, a page written very entirely in Latin. He hands it to you, and he goes, There you go. It's I, very uh, official, isn't it? I give it a once, like a, a not a, a twice over. I feel like I'm the kind of man who would give things a twice over. Um, and I hand it back to him saying, hmm, yes, well this is only valid for the next year or so. You will have to apply for your proper absolution license. Oh, don't worry license about that. The Messiah's then. coming. And he just puts it back in and closes the book. Yes, there is always a Messiah coming, isn't there? Oh, oh, he, oh he's, he's coming oh, this time and he's going to make everyone happy. That's what they all say and yet they never seem to come. Who is the Messiah? I've had many a woman complain about that from her husband. <laughs> yes, indeed. The only thing you can truly count on is a good, uh, a good tonic to cure whatever you might have picked up. A tonic? 
I yes. never referred no woman to no tonic. No, I, I, I suspect we're getting our wires crossed. Who is your messiah? The messiah? Oh, well, it's, uh, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but it's me. And, Bro yes, and Brian, and he turns around and gestures to the man with the scruffy beard. Brian's been telling me for the last five years that I should be, you know, doing these sermons and opening this dear book. We're getting to the end now, only one page left. And what will you do, pray tell, when the book is finished? Oh, well, it's been a fun read, isn't it? Maybe we'll go back and read it again. Mm. I have a feeling this man is a charlatan. Is this the book you would like me to read about the car? Oh, I hear you've been talking to Father Lysander about his book. It's a wonderful book that is full of lots of stories about carts and horses. Can I have a look at your book? At my book? Yeah, sure. Here, here you go. He, he offers you this gigantic, thick book. It weighs an absolute head, like, like ton in your hands. Right, it's I literally the holiest want to go to the book. Lap. I want to go. I want to go to the last page and read it. <laughs> okay, you go to the last page, and there's this gigantic wax seal keeping the, the page shut. <laughs> uh. Oh, I really do hope you read that book again, because like we've only come towards the end. I, I've got no idea what's been going on with the rest of the book. I feel like I'm missing out. Oh, it's been a great story so far. There was this man, right? And he, he told people don't be a dick. It was wonderful. I liked it a lot. Right, completely out of character. Me, me, Jeff. Right, I really want to crack that book. I really want to just like rip that page out or something. Do it, coward. <laughs> but is that something that Jingo would do? I don't know. That's the question only you can answer. <laughs> Does this last page contain the secrets of the sound? Hey, there's only one more Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna crack that seal. Alright, roll to try and crack the seal. Uh, what am I rolling? It's normal d20. Uh, spring on the end of the world, baby. Oh no, everyone's gonna get tapeworms. <laughs> what are the only capitals? There's not enough Snickers in the entire world. <laughs> 17? 17, you tug and you tug and you tug and you tug. See if it doesn't open. She goes, oh don't worry, a lot of people have been trying to open my book. It don't work for anyone, it seems. I got the magic touch. Because you're the Messiah. <laughs> well, I've been told that for a while by Brian. Brian's very insistent. Ain't you, Brian? Turn for him, the scruffy man with the beard walks over and goes, you, you can't give them the book. And he grabs the book off Jingo and goes, The book's sacred! You can't just give it to anyone! Oh, Brian, don't be so anyone. worried! What's the worst he can do? It's just a book! Where did you get the book from, Brian? Brian just up shakes his head and goes, We found it in the cave! But it's very important, you can't just, you can't just give it to anyone! Give it to him. What cave, Brian? The... The mushroom cave? Well, yes! Of course it's the mushroom cave. What other cave would I be in? I don't know. I don't know what caves you go in. Are I the acoustics any good as well? It's like stare and then sort of... Goes, well, I, I hope that you... I hope that you realise that you can't just give the book to anyone. I, I, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. He takes the book and starts heading off. Oh, don't worry about him. He's a little bit stuck up about stuff. Yes, it seems to be the case. Couldn't imagine living in life like that. How come he doesn't let you keep the book? I mean, if you're the Messiah, surely the book should be with you. Well, I thought that, but Brian's very insistent. He says it's, it's got to stay in the holiest of places. We can't open um, too much, we can't spoil it for people. It seems to well, me Brian is running some sort of scam. Where is the holiest of places? Oh, I don't really know, to be honest. But I know Brian stays under the lighthouse, in the cave. Is that the mushroom cave? Oh, I. Did you not know that Velastia in old, in the old language means island of one cave? No. Why would no, I know well, that? Now you do. Well, I think we should uh, inspect this cave. It was what? 
find out why he doesn't want the Messiah to have his own book. That's just, that's just wrong, that is. I would really rather not set foot in a dank, moist, infested cave. Really? You don't want to go nowhere, but it's just sad. Don't you know that mushrooms only grow in filth? Yeah, don't you know? You're filth. How have you know I am? I am in Me and Digo our sins have been forgiven. We're clean. You're the filthy one. You're a filthy, Be filthy sinner. I am impeccably clean. I wash myself regularly with methylated spirits. Do you wash your legs? Every inch of me. <laughs> Every inch? Even the whole Every inch. <laughs> it can be quite uncomfortable at times. Burn? It can be quite uncomfortable, but that is the price we pay to avoid tapeworms and blight. Would you hold the Snickers up before or after? Do I hold the what up, sorry? The Snickers. The Snickers. The Snickers is a once a week thing, just to be sure. Oh, I have see. yet to have a response to the Snickers. Is it the same Snickers every time? Maybe it's stale and that's why your tapeworm doesn't want it. No, I would not hold a piece of food or bait for that long. <laughs> the, the Snickers is thrown out immediately. Well, you don't even eat it. That's just a waste of food. Not after it has been so close to my exit. Rub it on your tent. That's how you get them out. <laughs> <laughs> and does not need to be rubbed, I assure you. Tapeworms have a fantastic sense of smell. Might be a little tight rubs once you're dead and will loosen you up. I do not need anyone going anywhere near there, thank you very much. Except perhaps my doctor, that is in strictly regulated and predetermined times. I don't think that's a doctor, mate. I assure you, it is a medical professional. No, no, if it, whatever he gets up to is none of her problem. You're right, it is not, although I will have you know it is nothing untoward. Well then, you have fun with that and I'll speak to you all later. Oh, the doctor is not fun. Getting out and finding you have a clean bill of health, that is the greatest joy I can ever think of, but all the testing is not fun. Right, well, maybe you could make it fun. You the know, doctor's office is look no him in place. the eye and crack a smile and all that. The doctor's office is no place for jovality. Oh, well. Well, I've got, very people to be, I've got people to repent, so I've got to go and speak to them. You have a good evening, and I'll speak to you all later. I'm sure you have lots to keep. How many people have drank this? How many people have drank this this now? Soup. <laughs> Quite a lot of them. Well, can I go back on stage for an encore? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can go on stage for an encore if you want. I feel like Jingo's just going to live here as like the town bards. <laughs> so as um, I think good plays for the audience. See how many fans he gets. Oh, oh no, Sharon has been taken in by it as well. <laughs> you gained 67 more fans. Woo! Woo! How many people live on this island? <laughs> uh, live on the island is only about 40, but there's currently about a couple of hundred. Ooh. Maybe even That's close to a thousand. Hundred. And there's more 102 there. now. So half the island. 102 fans for me. Okay. Think of all the fan mail. So oh, as, no. the, as the day draws to a close, um, you, you see the sun rise in the distance, and uh, you have the choice of... Um, uh, you basically have the choice of the town square. Um, uh, hang on, have I got the right one? Yes, I do. Yes, there we go. So you have the choice of the town square. Uh, again, the lighthouse is ever to see Billy and his firing cannons. Uh, or, uh, actually, no, yeah, the lighthouse of the town square. We can either try to inspect the cave. I don't know, do, is, to get to the cave, do we need to go to the lighthouse? Yeah, the cave is or... beneath the lighthouse. <laughs> I don't know, town square or cave. Well, I, for one, have absolutely no interest in going in a dank, sodden cave. But you are free to do whatever you wish. And to be fair, one of my fears is dark tunnels, and I guess that would be a cave. Yep. Oh, no dragons typing. 
I think we might be in too deep. <laughs> <laughs> like, I felt really bad when it was Sharona because she also has the kid. I'm surprised I've not got a message saying what yet. Oh my, no. <laughs> Kita is a beautiful man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is. Very. Congrats. It's <laughs> about we've got to go and adopt and we keep the lie up. I don't want to have to adopt a child. Ah. <laughs> uh, go on, Barry. Go adopt. Keep the lie up. No, I refuse to. To adopt to, to stay in this deep. <laughs> oh, Jeff, what have you done? <laughs> Listen, Jeff didn't get anybody pregnant, that was you. <laughs> I didn't. He didn't get anyone pregnant, it was the uh, divine. Oh, uh, yes. Immaculate conception. The immaculate I conception. Immac yes. I immaculately conceived. You immaculately conceived. <laughs> I just love that, I swear. <laughs> He just looked at someone oh. the wrong way and now they've got his kid. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dragon. Don't hate me. But <laughs> well, anyway, back to the story. Yes. I think it was the town hall. I don't know, oh, we could go to the... Oh, can't go to the cave? Well, you can go to the cave. <laughs> I'm going to stand outside the cave. I'm going to put the cave of balls. How to do it in. Yeah, so it's town go? square. Town square, apparently. Town square? Okay. So you go off the town square. And as you arrive, um, there is, you, you see Brian from the town square talking to the blacksmith. Um, you also see the innkeeper has been hard at work making, um, making sort of shanty houses as it were, out of uh, wood and, and sailcloth. And there are still hundreds and hundreds of people here. I want to condemn all of the shanty buildings. They are not safe. <laughs> are you gonna walk up and kick them to prove the point? Yes. Is it, uh, only if there's no one in them. <laughs> it would not be safe to kick down a shanty building with a person inside of it. Alright, roll, uh, roll strength to kick. Two seconds, I need to put the djembe down. <laughs> Five. You run up and you kick the... the you kick it, it's surprisingly firm considering your kick. Mm. However, it is still not safe. There is not enough walls to these buildings. There is no proper roofing. Not to mention the lack of doors. Um, these buildings are not up to code and they will be condemned. Are you going to kick them again? No, I'm just going to put the signs up that say condemned. Get a stamp that says condemned. Unfortunately, I, I didn't bring my stamp with me. These handwritten notices will have to do. Um, we can't be prepared for every eventuality, unfortunately. At this point, oh. a, um, one of the people who's helping to build the house, which is a different tabaxi, comes over and goes, Hey, hello. Hey. What, what, what are you doing? What, do, what is this you're writing on the house? Uh, it says condemned because these buildings are not up to code. Oh, uh, they are not safe to be living in oh, or staying in for any extended period of time. And, uh, what, what, what they must this, be dismantled. What does this mean, this condemned? Condemned means that they are to be closed down and dismantled immediately. Oh, but, we're, but we have just bid it. Yes, well, you should have done a better job. Um, you should have followed the codes and regulations as per this, uh, this area. Well, well, and uh, you uh, failed uh, to do so. Post sandy bit of tarp. I don't really understand how we could have built them better. Uh, well, you could have... For a start, had a proper foundation. You could have uh, had proper structure in the walling. There is no real. You know, it's the tobacco you start taking notes. <laughs> Fuck. Um, there is no support structure in place to hold the walls up. There is no. Uh, there is no. There is no load-bearing wall. Really, there's. You need something to bear the load. Uh, there is no proper that you roof tied to the floor. Yes, no, that will not support a wall, I'm afraid. There is no proper roof to keep the elements out. Anybody could catch anything left open to the elements like this. Um, but but the, the sailcloth keeps it dry, no? No, no, it, it is not considered to be sufficiently waterproof, I'm afraid. Um, I will have a copy of the regulations in the, co in the building code sent over to you. Uh, oh, you can 
you can then study them uh, after you've dismantled these buildings and dwellings. build some proper dwellings. I mean, do we have to dismantle them? Can we not leave yes. them up to the book arrive here? No, they have to be dismantled immediately. I'm afraid they are unsafe. But what do we do for all the people that are living in? Uh, they will have to find somewhere else to stay or simply make a camp. But this is a camp, no? No, this is not a camp. These are intended to be permanent dwellings and therefore are considered unsafe. I do not understand this new modern technology. You do not need to understand it, I'm afraid. You just need to follow it. What does the prince think? The prince, the prince, I'm sure, would be deeply disgusted with this, with the standard that these buildings are being constructed in, and I use that term very loosely. Oh, I see. He was here earlier to open one of them. The prince was yeah, here. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he went to the inn, I believe. The, Ill, the inn that is also closed down. What, what do you mean the inn that is closed down? It's I condemned the inn just two days ago. But, but the it inn is not clear. closed, it is still open, look. Jeff is over and the inn looks literally full of people. I am going to storm in and as close to angry as I can manage. <laughs> like, right, everybody out, this building is not safe. The floor caved in just two days ago. As, as you uh, walk in, the, the, the floor has been very loosely repaired. Yes, very loosely indeed. Um, I expect the same thing. There are no ladders off. leading down to the lower floor. Mm -hmm. Now that is a bandage, as it were, not a solution. Uh, the problem still remains that this is unsafe and will be shut down until such a time that it is made safe. At this point, a uh, quite strange, a sort, of, a sort of ginger dwarf comes over to you and goes, Hello, um, what is this you're doing? I am making sure that everything is following the appropriate codes and regulations. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And how do you do that? By condemning buildings such as this that are not up to code so that people do not get hurt, for example, by falling through the floor into a sub-level. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And, and how long have you been doing that for? Well, I've done it all my life. I'm 42 now. I've been doing it since the age of 12. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, do you plan on doing it longer? Till the yes, till the day I die, I expect. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And is this your, is this your life partners? Any gestures towards Jingu and Fonz? No, I. Uh, I Mark would rather. Even? Yes, yes, I'm <laughs> sure you do. Um, the feeling is far from mutual, I'm afraid. Um, unfortunately, we are stuck together for the foreseeable. But I intend to to leave as soon as. It's, is uh, reasonably is that a available. problem with the molasses? The molasses, sorry. Yes, molasses. The the the, the byproduct from refining sugar. Yes, yes. The sticky stuff. Yeah. Well, why would I have a trouble with molasses? Other than well, the fact that all stuck ground. together, so I assumed it was a sugar-based problem. The building is held together with molasses. Well, yes, all of them are. A material that dissolves when it gets wet. Yes. Well, and therefore, uh, when it rains, these buildings will. Well, we, we didn't collapse. have much air salt and sugar beet when building the buildings, so we used a lot of molasses. Anybody who chooses to stay within these buildings has a death wish. Uh, well, I am condemning them. If you choose to stay, I will have to force a contact guards to have you forcibly evicted. Forcibly evicted? These... Now that's. Yes. Concept. Yeah, well, it's quite a straightforward concept. People who are armed will come and take you out. Oh, unless will you they? do so. Oh, yeah. yeah. could, I, could I have my guards help you? Absolutely. I would, oh, that would be very helpful. Wonderful. Um, if, you would ha if you could direct them to just have everybody removed from this building, I suppose. I see, um, I see. And we will move but, right um, on. If I do that, uh, where would everyone go? Well, it would have to go somewhere else, I suppose. Ah, but what if there is nowhere? Well, the government does not concern itself with that. Just rather... Government? What, what government is it? The, the government of the land, the Prime Minister and the Lordship. Oh, I, I haven't seen one of those. No, people rarely do see them. They tend to stay up in the castles or big houses. My father lives in a castle on the mainland. Does that count? 
A lot of people can live in castles. It does mean, not mean they have any authority, I'm afraid. It is very true. Oh, well, yes, if you could get your guards to round everybody up, that would be fantastic and much appreciated. Oh, yes, yes, uh, I, could, I could definitely ask them. Um, By all means, we'll Sarah, get to it then. Sarah, where's Alex? Could, could you ask them to, to sort of bring people together, please? Got a, got an announcement. Because these two confused looking guards start sort of pulling people up from their beds and moving them all towards you. Well, right, um, the gentleman here has a small thing he'd like to tell everyone. Yes, this building is liable to collapse at even the slightest uh, presence of precipitation. Uh, and therefore, you will all leave now, willingly, or these guards will take you out by force if necessary. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. See, see, uh, say for understanding. And there's a lot of silence amongst the room. Because, uh, I, I don't think they're following you, old Well, you will leave this building and go outside to find somewhere else that is safely built in order to stay. And you will do so right now. What other buildings are there that are, that are safely built over me? It doesn't necessarily have to be a building, just somewhere that is not unsafe. Oh, could we dig this some place, holes? So long as they follow the appropriate codes and regulations, yeah. What, what is the code and regulation for a hole? And depending on the size they must have, structural load-bearing beams. Uh, oh, but what load is the hole bearing? Well, that's more for tunnels, really, I suppose. But any tunnel, if made long, any hole, if made large enough, requires some structure, or else it will simply cave in. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm learning so much. <laughs> yes, poor Jingo, I'm sorry I mentioned the T-word. <laughs> it's okay, Jingo, don't let him get you. You know what he's like. Yes, we must all vacate this premises immediately. I guess that's, uh, is that everyone as you were then? And, uh, no, no, Alex? not as you were. We must all leave. Well, there's nowhere else to go. He sort of looks like, oh, it's starting to rain outside. I think I'll just stay in if it's all the same. Well, no, because the walls, the walls are built with molasses. The molasses will dissolve in the rain and the building is liable to collapse. That I'm sure it won't. I mean, surely it must be held together well enough. I mean, surely it rained before today. Who can say? I'm not a meteorologist, I'm afraid. A meteorologist? Oh, that's, a, that's an interesting title. What do they do? They study the weather. Look, I feel like you're taking me for a fool. Um, I have done all I can. I will contact the appropriate authorities. They will send whatever... Uh, guards they need to evict you in the meantime if you want to stay in here know so it is at the detriment of your own health oh well that's it's been lovely to meet you i, mm. I hope i wish i could wonderful say. stay in this wonderful village i wish i could say the same and i'm just gonna leave oh really some guys you know they just don't want to be helped you gotta let them live that way and make their own decisions. yes some people cannot be helped indeed <laughs> And I'm just going to find, like, a quiet corner just to, like, scream <laughs> internally. <laughs> well, as you walk outside, For the, the, next um, the queue while. to get into the inn is, is getting more and more angsty, the fact that it's starting to rain. And every so, often, some, every so often someone walks from the, the sort of buildings that seem to be being created off the side and being sort of sweeping people into those, those newly formed tents. While Klepto and Jeff do whatever they do, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going to be looking the char a boat off of this island. <laughs> He's just sick. He's done. He wants to go back to where things make sense. Let's try and find Catherine. We're here for one thing, mate. No. We found her, she went off. We lost her. I mean, how many women are there here with a broken man? Well, that's time to be a lot home. more if they stay in that building. Right. Can I, can I get can I get on stage? Yes. Has has the stage been repaired? It's it looking very sorry for itself. It looks like something quite heavy was pushed into it overnight because it's sort of very much crumpled compared to what it was. Well, I'll stand on part of the stage that looks safe. I'll play like a little tune just to get everybody's attention. Okay. And then I'll put out an, an announcement for Catherine to come and join me on stage. Could Catherine join me on stage, please? It's Catherine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you want me to roll for that? Uh, no, I assume you can just you can just do that. Right. You've got enough followers then. Oh, half the island on your side. Yeah, I've got half the island. There's quite a lot of people on your side, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So as we we'll go into the next time slot. Um, there are. It looks like a a small commotion happening at the lighthouse. There is a again. It's low tide again, so there's the carts are going back to the wrecks, and there's quite a sort of bustle going around the town square. What do you want to do? Dear God, man, what does a man have to do to charter a boat off this godforsaken island? You can go to the docks if you want, don't we? Yes, let's have that implied in the background that I'm at the, at the docks trying to sort this out. Did I Catherine there was a come and join me? Did Catherine join me on stage? Catherine did not join you on stage. God damn it, Catherine, you one job! Uh... Is um, any of the old guys there like Lysander or Artemis? Um, not that you can. No, what? Well, I'm pretty worried about me old mate up at the lighthouse. Should we go see you, mate? Yeah. yeah, let's go to the lighthouse. Okay. Bye, Bowery! As, um, as William goes off to the. Sort of quietly goes off to shut <laughs> down at the, at the docks, and the rest you go to the lighthouse. As you get to the bottom of the lighthouse, you see Billy swaying back and forth with a box of moonshine on top of the cannon, wheeling the cannon there down the hill. Where are you going, Billy, mate? The whales are that one, like... As... Ah, he's, oh, my as he tries to talk, he's incredibly intoxicated. Who could have foreseen such a series of events? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Billy, mate. you got to talk to me. It can't be as bad as that. He, he sort uh, of just... His jaw just sort of goes quite slack and he just sort of dribbles at you a bit as he goes back to pushing the cannon. I'll run up to the lighthouse to see if I can see what's turned him away. Okay. You, are you going into the lighthouse itself? Yeah. You open the lighthouse itself, uh, there's a strong smell of oil. Um, there's a simple bed to the side, there's quite a lot of large barrels full of what looks like some kind of alcohol. There's a large, like, open barrel which smells very strongly of urine and on the wall there's like several baskets and boxes with like various like hops and barley and stuff and there's a, a sort of spiral staircase leading upwards. I feel like if William knew what has just been encountered he would be very happy to not be there. <laughs> <laughs> I go up the stairs. Okay. You go up the stairs to the top, you're now standing at the um, basically at the light of the lighthouse. The light. Which is very bright, shining outside. So the light worked. The light hasn't gone out the whole time you've been there. Come back down to Jingle. Hi. Hi. Light's still on. Oh, I don't know what people are crashing. And, oh, I don't know how we're going to be safe from the whales. It's gone. Like, at this point, I don't know um, what is. you see a bunch of people come out of the, the sort of passage to the cave below the lighthouse. One of them is um, Brian with his sort of shaved head and shaggy beard, and he goes, Ah, oh, they just left the door open. You, friend, and he gestures towards front, where did you get that clear liquid from yesterday? I, I, I got it. From a well. There's some clear bottles of clear liquid in there. He sort of looks inside Billy's house. Yeah, well, there the is. Lighthouse, by the way. Dang. Daniel, go, go, they, they, they go get the go get the bottles from there, will you? They'll, they'll do us a treat tonight. Yeah, they two will. Of them, two of them run inside, start picking up large boxes of these bottles. And you hear one of them call out, There's some barrels in here as well. Don't look in the barrels. No, don't see it. They're being treated. They make them more pure. Well, if they, they'll do for the tree, they'll be, they'll be great. Well, we all those barrels as well. Leave, leave the open ones. Just take the closed ones. Let's go. Let's get going. Is Catherine with them? No. Ah, uh, you lads haven't seen Catherine by any chance, have you? I really want to apologise to her about her nose, but I haven't had a chance to see her. Catherine? Who, who's Catherine? Ah, uh, the lady with the broken nose. Oh no, no. She might be staying with the vicar though. He, he's uh, he lives in the mayor's house. Ah, uh, see, so probably. Ah. Uh, See to that. Is that where you guys are headed? I'm gonna give you a hand with the barrels. Oh no, no, we're heading to the farmland to uh, to make the soup for the evening. Well, good luck with that. But I really go see Catherine. 
Oh, 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 all right, you go to the mayor's house. Um, as you you knock on the door, there's a very a sort of hushed voice, and the door is opened by a, a sort of old older man with a quite burly moustache. Yes. Because I might not a stash. Uh, um, yes. Yes. What, what are you selling? Oh, I'm not selling anything, mate. It's just. Not... I did something wrong the other day and I've been reflecting on it because I'd have been said that I was free of sin but I, this seemed pretty bad and I accidentally hit a lady in the face with a crowbar and she got a busted up nose and I was wondering if I could apologise to her. You want to speak to the Reverend? Uh, Alright, okay. Uh, Reverend, is for you. <laughs> he, he goes inside and the, um, at this point the priest comes to the room and goes, Oh my child. Welcome, in. Have you, you had a bit of downfall, my friend? Oh, well, not downfall as much as more reflection. You remember that lady that had the broken knives? Oh, yes, the, the, the poor gay lady Catherine, yes, yes, I remember her, yes. Yeah, do you happen to know where she is? I've been looking for her, and uh, that Brian bloke said that she might be up here with you. Oh, she she left a little earlier to go to the farm to um, meet Artemis before his, the big event tonight. Uh, but, um,. I'm sure if you want a message pass one, I could pass one on to you. Do you, no, do you seek absolution, my child? Well, it's more I need it from her lips kind of thing, because it was her that I did wrong. Oh, I see, I see. Forgiveness through repent. Oh, you are a brave soul. I remember when yeah. I was young and was a brave soul, too. Yep, that's me. Bright, bold, beautiful. Well, um... I don't really like standing here on, on ceremony in the doorway, but um, it is not my house to invite anyone in. Uh, I'll, I'll Are we going to sit upon there, the mate. chairs? And he just sort of a small like, picnic bench outside. No, you know what, mate? I, I think I'll just head off to the farm and find Catherine. Yeah, well, and, uh, uh, I, will, I will catch you all later there, as the, as the kids say. And uh, we, will, um, we will have a good meal and a good uh, congregation, see. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I think the mushrooms will be uh, coming up a treat tonight. It's real tasty. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, well, uh, I'll see you in the farm. Bye. <laughs> well, we will move to the next time slot, which will be, I uh, imagine, going to the farm? Yeah. yeah. It's the evening, and you're going to the farm. Uh, so it's the night time, you're going to the farm. Uh, as you arrive, um, as you're walking between the house and the, the farm, there's a strange suddenness that everything suddenly goes incredibly dark. Oh no. I'm blind! As you look around, and you, you take a couple of seconds to realise that the reason everything is suddenly so dark is the lighthouse has stopped working. Oh, damn it. Oh dear. What do you mean you can't sail? The lighthouse has gone out. I'm not trying to get off the island. I'm trying to get off. But... Yeah. <laughs> so as you um, as you sort of wander around, you see eventually see a couple of candles that have been lit at the farmyard. You, you sort of stumble your way towards them in the pitch black, and as you get closer, um, you see the gigantic vat of mushroom soup um, that seems to be handing out to people, and people seem to be like drinking it and properly collapsing onto the floor. And, and as you, you watch, you see the, the man with the white beard going, going Friends, friends, it is, it is my honour to open the final page of the book and we can carry on! Oh. Alright, uh, is Catherine around there? Uh, you see Catherine off to the side of the stage. Okay. Uh, can I go on stage? <laughs> Standard ploy. Uh, play like a little ditty. You know, like a pre-opening ceremony song. Mm -hmm. And then, once all of my half, all of my fans have like come in close, 
can I like grab the book off the priest and then like crowd surf and then run away? <laughs> you can definitely try, yes. Right. <laughs> Why are we rolling for this? As you as you, you get on stage, you realise the book is not there and you see there's a sort of weird thin gentleman running from the back of the crowd holding the book in his hands as he runs forward. Can I tackle that thin block? You tackling him? Yeah. Okay. Straight? Yep. Oh, as you go to tackle him, his own feet betray him and he slips and falls face first into the ground. The book the flies from his hand and lands in the pot of soup. Oh no. Oh, you. In the hell is this going on? Oh. What has happened to the damn lighthouse? I'm trying to get a boat off this damn place and they will say they can't go because the lighthouse has stopped working. What dickhead? I tip over the... Do you tip over the soup? Okay. Yep. Oh, for Christ's sake. tip over the soup, there's a... Uh, as soon as the soup itself touches the fire beneath... Um, Oh no! <laughs> thing, there is a massive explosion. There's a massive fireball, the si size and face of which you have never seen before. I told you you shouldn't have eaten the bloody soup. All, <laughs> all of you are incinerated. Oh. oh no. And then almost a split second of each other, you are all just engulfed in this gigantic, white hot ball of flame. <laughs> Although you have not survived, you have indeed saved the world. Oh, okay. <laughs> this does Give not that, comply Bob. with safety regulations. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so yes, that is uh, that is the end. You have you have saved the world in a ball of fire. From evil soup. <laughs> From evil soup. Yes. Um, I will blow out a hero. So yes. Uh, so uh, as ever, who who are you? Where can folk find you? So Starting with Belry. Uh, I'm Belry. As was previously mentioned. Uh, I can be found here, I suppose. <laughs> I am coming back to after a bit of a break, and um, not from having a child, <laughs> it should be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry, Dragon. You better uh, be the ones to tell them, otherwise they're going to be very upset. Yes, I'm going to have to tell them probably fairly soon. <laughs> but yes, uh, I, I, I will work out when exactly that will be uh, in the coming days, I am sure. All right. But I mean, stay tuned for more dickheads. <laughs> yes, I mean, if, you, if you can do Wednesday, maybe we could start something else up. But again, mm -hmm. we'll wait. I think. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff. Uh, I'm Jeff. You can find me at jeffzillard.art pretty much anywhere. Instagram, Twitter, the standard two medias. Go check out some art. I am Klepto. I do voices on things and lurk about basically. Do you still do your art clip though? I've not done much in a while. I've been more making things at the moment. She's going on a making binge. Yeah. Made a jumper. Ah yes. That was the player. That was a different ending from the one we had the other day. So hopefully maybe we'll see all the endings. But I am now going to go and explain to them what happened, what the other endings are and get some feedback. So yes. Thank you everyone for watching along, listening along. And we'll see you all next time. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.